Welcome to another episode of the Legends of the Drowned Isles, our homebrew D&D 5th edition game. Our home table to your home screen, I guess? Sure. How about that? I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the GM uh, mastermind slash uh, uh, primary force of blame for this game. But I do have collected with me my wonderful players once again. It's been a little while for us. For you, it might just have been another <laughs> button click of next. Hard to say exactly. But we'll go around the table as we traditionally do to uh, introduce all the players, starting from over here. Hello, I am Marie. Uh, I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid. Um, and yeah, I took really, really bad notes last session, so I don't know what was happening. <laughs> Great. Well, between one of us, hopefully you remember some of the I wrote happened. two lines, and neither of them have to do with what I remember. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm really curious what these two lines are. Give us the preview of what those two lines are. The two lines that I have written down, three including the date. <laughs> uh, the 15th of Axum, a little calm but balanced, kobold divided into factions. Well, there you go. <laughs> that, that totally sums up everything we need to know. Totally. How about... Our next player. Hi, uh, I'm Jody. I play Clark, the half orc fighting rogue, and uh, he's uh, he's in a he's in a scenario. We'll find out what that is shortly. <laughs> he's in a scenario. It's, it's been a while. There is a, uh, some things that have been done with stuff, yeah. and people, and places. Yes, and results have been uh, accrued. <laughs> things have been mixed. Yeah. All right. Continuing around the table. Hi, I'm Nax. I play Zacchaeus and Lana Porter, half elf wizard. And how do your notes look? <laughs> they look actually pretty complete. I have that's like a whole page. Yeah, well, that's two pages. It's weird. I'm usually very detailed in my notes. Total. One page total. Okay. And the last note is light inside crystal is dimmed. Was maybe a focus for the portal. So did I remember to grab some of those crystals before we left the room? Or no? we haven't left the room yet. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of those crystals. <laughs> the room. We did kind of move I a little bit uh, away from the the space where we know we're going next anyway. But and we have Jack back. But we can we can have a little bit there. Uh, and our our last player. Uh, my name's Pat. I'm playing Emeryn Alisar, the Wood Elf uh, Cleric of Life and Water. Uh, quite lots of fun and still has water walk up. Uh, I actually listened to our, uh, our uh, <coughs> video uh, a few weeks ago, so I remember what was going on. <laughs> uh, as I looked down and realized, nope, this is the paragraph from the previous session, so I did not, in fact, write a summary of last session, <laughs> but I'll do my best to try to catch people up to date. So... In the last session, after talking with Elil, uh, Alexia Ferendra's brother, who had displayed very strange habits, had seemingly tried to balance everything, he revealed, in fact, that he was effectively, you might say, an emissary for the great balance, the Justicar, a being of tremendous power, who sought to bring balance to the universe, effectively, and had seen numerous elements of imbalance within the city. Deep below the city, Elil had detected something of imbalance that he wanted to correct, but also saw that there was somewhat of a barrier to him. And so he asked that each of you, if you could go in his place, to remove the barriers so that he could come in. When you traveled down below the city, below the sewers and into the waterways that run throughout uh, Vatur Dren, you encountered something you'd never seen before. Strange creatures, tall, lithe, and somewhat floating, with faces full of tentacles. Inside your minds, they tried to pry. But after encountering you guys, they fled, leaving behind a couple of strange creatures and, apparently, a portal to a watery realm. From that portal emerged a strange variation of something you've seen in a couple of different ways. It looked to be like a beholder, but much more squid-like. It still floated above the sky, or above the ground, I should say, and still gave you a run for your money. And beyond it, another creature coming out of the water, something which had even more tentacles and a desire to take some treasure back with it. That treasure in the shape of Clarg, dragging him down into this watery realm, from which you do not expect he might have returned, or maybe you would have had to make a journey to get him, but no! Clever tricks and some very careful spell casting and a few extra lucky rolls pulled you out of the watery realm 
And then, having defeated the, the, uh, the creature for the moment, it retreated. Having defeated the other beholder-like thing, it retreated. And then, having destroyed the few totems around the room that seemed to have kept Alil out, he ran in, dove at the water, and it solidified, the portal having been closed. You also found a couple of people who were in very bad shape. One of which, Jack Grant, who you'd not seen for some time. Along with him, uh, the young boy Jacob was also there. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of people you didn't recognize. The few uh, kobolds, uh, of which you've seen before, the kobold sorcerers or kobold necromancers, if you've seen them. Last time you encountered them uh, properly, they were necromancers because they had been doing strange things with dead bodies and strange things with enhancing regular kobolds as well, a few of which you saw here. Uh, they both were lost in the water, presumably drowned on the other side of that realm. Anything else anyone would care to add? Beholders three, Amarin, or sorry, Beholders zero, Amarin three. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm keeping track. A different variation. They're not related, so just so you know, it's not a family thing. When Emil uh, tried to jump into the portal, was he trying to go through, or did him jumping in somehow like solidify it? It looked as though when he dove forward, he dove with his hands outstretched, and as soon as they touched the edge of the portal, it solidified okay, and so he vanished. Closed it pretty yeah. Much. Yeah. So it looks as though he was not trying to get through. Um, he came through, however, without any regard to anything else in the room. So if, for example, those had been uh, those totems had been destroyed earlier, and say Clark was on the other side of that portal, he would have been stuck there, very likely. Yeah. Sure There's a the reason I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so you find yourself in this room. If there's anything you want to grab or take a look at before, there's very little to really see. There is the signs of some uh, additional chains that were there uh, that were used for other people. Tools, although some of them seem to be missing, um, nothing of real value in behind the scenes. Mm, I'm just mm. gonna go look at a picture of the thing if I still. Yeah, I'll okay. grab some of the portal stabilizing crystals. Okay. Well, they yeah. were mostly complete, almost entirely destroyed. There's yeah. one that downpowered though. Yeah. It was damaged yeah. and it ran out. So I'll yeah. grab like a big, the biggest piece I can find. Okay. Just um, so I can study it later. I'm gonna go. There was a treasure chest. I'm just gonna go check. It was holographic. I, I thought that it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was a it was a Illusionary. lure for the room. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I do pick up. There were two uh, blue crystal structures. Mm -hmm. One of them got blown up. I pick up the one that did not. Okay. It's not glowing from within. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of been depowered, but it still might be useful for other things. Uh, I'm gonna go check. There were a bunch of barrels that I, per I believe had fish in them. I'm going to yes. go check to see if there's anything else in them. Okay, you start digging through the, the fishy barrels. Yes. Having to push quite hard, because I think you still have the effect of water walk on you. Uh, mm. And you're also an air elemental. Yep. So every time you dip your hand in, it kind of pushes yeah. back out on its own. Uh, but you find nothing but fish. Just fish. It looks like this was their supper. This was their food supply uh, that they brought down in here. They might have captured the fish from elsewhere, but you don't. the fish don't look abnormal. Okay. So there, there's none that look interesting. Nothing particularly, no. Yeah. No, fi common fish you would find in this area. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, and just looking at my picture here. Uh, I think and when that the portal sealed, it was revealed to be nothing more than solid ground beneath. They mm -hmm. had probably flooded the area to open the portal. But the water then was sustained from the other world. Alil stands up, kind of brushes himself off. Uh, he probably hit a bit harder than he intended. You can see that he's he's looking a little bit bruised, but not not sore, not uh, pained. It is done. Thank you all. But now I think we need to speak to my sister. Indeed, we do. How did you do that? The portal closing. That's a nice trick. I'm did y'all did you always have that ability? No, no. Only when I was reborn as a servant of the great Justicar that I even have any inkling of that. Honestly, it's the first time it's really worked. The other times, I've been able to sense the imbalance, but there was no portal. I 
knew that it was the right thing to do. Well, it was. It was uh, kind of you to wait until we were all on this side again. You were? Yeah. I simply sensed the barrier going down, and I rushed in as quickly as I could. Yeah, it oh. come literally seconds before we would have lost to Clark and Zacchaeus. Mm. Thanks for the save, by the way. Or I, I've saved nothing because I'm in air elemental form. <laughs> uh, uh, he I understands understand. me. <laughs> Clark's Clark's words uh, remain. Yeah. <laughs> um, is no problem. Anyone badly hurt, other than me? I'll live. Uh, Jack and Jacob might need some assistance. Mm. Yeah, Jack was particularly bad off. I think you had actually used cure wounds at one point. I know you. No, no I, no, I, I untied everyone. Yeah, I yeah. healing. I did healing words him right once. Still groggy and obviously quite poisoned and a bit loopy in many ways too. Uh, it doesn't look like he can really focus on a lot of things. Well. Just to make everyone feel better, I'm going to cast a mass cure wounds. Okay. I believe uh, that takes ten minutes. Nope. Okay. No, oh, that's, that's the spell. That's the instant. Right. Well, as you stand there and the swirl of water forms around you once more, you see Aleel a little bit nervous about what's happening. Um, perhaps because he just closed the portal to a watery realm and now seeing the tendrils of water flowing around you and then surging out to each of the people around. Um, but he seems to realize what's happening pretty quickly. Everyone heals 29 Woo! Woo. Uh, points. Actually, we've got Jack, the kid. Ignore me. One other. Yeah, I think, because I can do six, I think. So, okay. yeah, we have the three of us and the three of them. Okay. Infected. I have 62 cool. hit points left in this form and then 63 in my other form. Yeah. I'm good. Um, that is the last magic I can do until I rest. I'll heal myself eight with a level one spell slot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Jack still seems to be somewhat incoherent, uh, struggling to focus. His eyes don't seem or seem to be very glazed over. Uh, Jacob similarly seems kind of pale and uh, almost as though his, his skin to the touch is kind of clammy. Almost like the aftermath of a fever. Okay. I forgot to bring the sheet with me, but I think we have some anti poisons uh, in the group bag. Yes. So we might want to feed one to Jack. The group bag's on me. Those are on me right now. Uh, I'm not leaving my form until we're out of here. Well, you had some, but Emmett still has group loot in his bag. But it's stuff that's meant for the group resources. Yeah. Uh, I, I, had I, bought, I I had bought the the ones that we have the, for the group loot, which I, I was carrying. Uh, yeah, but I also got you, you three got more them. anti poisons. Okay. Cool. Uh, so yeah, there we can expend one of them for Jack. Okay. So we don't have to carry him out. Mm -hmm. So you feed him one of the anti poison, anti toxin. Uh, yeah. Drafts. Um, he doesn't even seem to really respond. You find yourself having to hold his head even. Uh, but as the draft drips down his throat, uh, his eyes do seem to come clear. And he sort of moves in surprise because he's looking up at Amrun, not in the face obviously he expected to see. Is it? Is it really you? Well, that's, that's lucky then. And then he looks over and sees Jacob and starts to scramble over to him. Jacob, are you alright? Jacob! He kind of slaps him a bit on the face. I I think he's still well affected by whatever whatever that was. Yes. Uh, I can still hear it. It's strange. What was it? The thing we fought? Or was it something else? Uh, I don't know what you were fighting. Uh, I honestly Big don't things, remember. Big things, tentacles floating. People with tentacle faces. Uh, that I do remember a little bit. I wasn't sure exactly. The images in my mind weren't quite lining up with everything I was seeing. It was strange. I saw different people, uh, but it's like their faces just melted away, and then I saw those creatures with the, the squid faces. Uh, I think there was... I don't know what they gave me, but it was... <laughs> 
Well, it was like the worst drink I've ever had. Uh, you know how you've had a f bit of fun on the town, and you've had a too many to drink, and looking around, looks at Clark. I'm, I'm thinking about thinking he's probably the right only now. one who might have had a shared experience like this. I had some bad milk ones. You, you know, when you've had a bit of mead that's gone beyond its day, and it sound, feels great until you kind of wake up with that headache and a, a lot of black in your memory. Well, maybe you guys don't know that. There's a laugh from the air elemental. Sure. I'm just thinking about Gort Blackhammer's brew. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, but he looks upon you know you guys are kind of like the well you're the the scholarly one, <laughs> you're kind of the weird traveler priest. Uh, <laughs> I don't drink and who doesn't seem to imbibe much. And then air elemental. Uh, he, does, he looks at uh, Aleel with no recognition whatsoever. Uh, I think I'm at a loss. Aleel, Jack, Jack, Aleel. Uh, Aleel was dead, but he seems to have come back with a desire to balance the world. Uh, Jack is currently on the run from the courts. Um, what did, do you want us to do with you, Jack? Uh, is there a place you like to be dropped off? <laughs> uh, well, it's complicated, as you might imagine. I'm innocent, in case you didn't know that. Oh, we figured. Pretty sure. I, I was very... Uh, I say to him, I was very confused. <laughs> First of all, he kind of steps up and brushes himself off, brushes his hand off, and walks over to Alil. Jack Grant, nice to meet you. Dead once, but you look great. So I guess you got over it. Um, it happens to everyone once. He got better. Is mm -hmm. Jacob going to be all right? Probably. And you can uh, see Jacob's kind of sitting there, kind of staring it, into space. It looks like the same thing that was bothering you, uh, to probably some sort of... Uh, May I make a medicine check? Poison. Sure. As the arrow mental kind of swirls over to him, and he's not responding at all, Jack kind of steps Nine. back a little bit. <laughs> uh, you swirl over him, and the best you're able to do is kind of swish his hair around in different areas and different directions. I believe That's with you? Uh, it's all yes, there, it's yeah. all there. Oh, um, you don't look the same. <laughs> Because I don't think he ever saw you in Earth Elemental or an Air Elemental form uh, no. before. Only in um, mm -hmm. the uh, the young one. Sh it, it should wear off. Um, we didn't want to have to carry you out, so uh, I get you it. Get the anti dogs. I'm feeling a little rusty, but I should be able to help him. Yeah, he's a good kid. He's a hard worker. Um, yeah, he stole a lot of stuff yeah. up there. Have any of your have, have any of your things gone missing? <laughs> No, not from me. He doesn't steal from me. Uh, he's been mostly helping me maintain some semblance of a lifestyle while I work down here. I suppose it shouldn't harm to tell you guys. Although I don't know this Aleel fellow. Uh, and ah, he's good. I trust him. Uh, Aleel kind uh, of looks... I sense in you an opportunity for balance, but you should know that my sister is one of the council people, Alexia Ferendro. And uh, at that, J uh, J or Jack, I should say, uh, looks a bit surprised. Uh, you keep strange company. Uh, but again, glad to hear you're not dead. <laughs> I know that Alexia was looking a lot for you, and well, the council went kind of a bit batty in the meantime. Does that mean Alexia's back then? Yes. Oh, good. That'll give a bit of uh, extra, uh, how did he put it, a balance back to the city, I imagine. Mm -hmm. What were you saying about your new line of work? Right. Well... If you don't mind me asking. No, I mean, I feel I can trust you. It has to be a little bit clandestine, which I didn't mind all that much, frankly, when I was approached by the Reeve to do this. I didn't know exactly what he meant. I guess Adrian gave me a good review. I had to go undercover. There's a thieves' guild running around the city. And, uh. Clark there, didn't know anything about that. Do you see that out loud? A bit unusual. Adrian and, uh. and the Reeve both filled me in. They have a strange. nature. For one thing, uh, nobody knows who they are, and that seems to be part of it. I thought I stumbled across them here, and well, I got caught. 
and because some of what these squid faces were doing is something similar, appearing to be other people. Mm. There are warrens down here that I don't think anybody's seen in hundreds of years. Most of them are empty. Some of them are blocked off. A lot of kobolds down here, too, but most of them have kept out of my way. Some of them seem to be trying to distance themselves from some of the others we encountered earlier, uh, the ones that were working with Arvax. Mm -hmm. But I, so far I haven't got much on this group. I know that they meet, and they have a couple of warrens down here that they've been hiding away. There's some, there's some places I haven't been able to get to yet. Every time I'm trailing one of these folks, it seems like they vanish. But I've done a few topside jobs for them. I've been working my way through, getting a little bit of, um, of an understanding. Because they need people to work for them who can move where they need to. I haven't killed anybody yet. I've been trying to avoid that. But, uh, it's always a good plan. Some of the trips have been a little bit rough. Thankfully, Adrian was able to give me a few things that I could trade and say that I gathered. So far as I can tell, the only name that anybody ever knows them by is the, the Old Library, which is a strange name in itself. Yeah. <gasps> nudge, nudge, nudge. <laughs> but I haven't got a lot. Everyone does go. <gasps> I ignore him. Most of the names that I've gathered of people topside are everyday ordinary people. The Reeve had me look into this because apparently Adrian's, uh, or sorry, apparently uh, the council member Woodcomb's assistant had been uh, compromised by mm -hmm. one of them at one point. Yes, we remember that. We were a little bit involved in that, actually. Oh, well. Uh, then maybe you guys are the right ones to talk to. I've been, well, the rest of my team has been down here, too kind of skulking around, trying to find different ways. And I'm the one who sort of got nominated, maybe nominated myself, for doing most of the talking with them. I've made a few contacts, but again, every time I meet with somebody, it seems to be someone different. Even though they seem to remember the conversation I had with them last time. So they could be a shapeshifter. That was one of Adrian's theories, is that the shapeshifters that apparently we dealt, you dealt with at the library were some of them. The illusionists were another. A bit of each, a bit of both. Maybe even... He looks over at the third person that was there, uh, who's still unconscious, but kind of... kind of sitting there. Um, did you make an insight roll? Third person? You mean like there was a third, a third There was person? a third human oh, person okay. there. I did not remember that. Um... Thirteen. Thirteen? Six. Six. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, not twenty. Okay. Me too. Oh, there you go. As uh, Jack brings attention to this third person and kind of looks over, Ah, oh, Remy, you've seen better days. The two of you noticed that for an instant, there was that glazed look on his face, the same thing that Jack had had and same thing that uh, uh, Jacob is still displaying. Mm hmm and it was solidly there, but for a brief instant, it had cleared, and he was clearly paying attention to the conversation as it was going on. I kind of need a little help getting Remy out, unless you get something else to clear his mind. He was, well, one of the people who was with me, one of my team. Okay. You know, it's up to list. I'm not absolutely certain if we had another anti-toxin or not. Um. We should get you topside, and if you can take Jacob mm. somewhere safe, that would be good too. Look at him with magic eyes, please. Um. It'll take time. Yeah. You think you can cure him of this? I cannot cure any more. Currently, not until I've had a rest, but uh, that would take quite a while. Um, but with there we go. Yeah, uh, if we can take ten minutes and see if there's any enchantments upon them, anyways. 
I don't know if they're going to be coming back. Um, those things tend to just disappear, but they seem to be able to communicate with each other without saying anything at all. It's all things in their the squid serve. Yeah, the squid faces. Mm -hmm. They're something new. I didn't expect to find them, and I didn't. I don't know if they're connected to this or not, or if it's just turf wars. To be honest, if they are, we'll find out. Um, so, are we going to be leaving then? Uh, well, once we've finished casting, yeah. So, you can, what, are you, what are you casting? Just detect magic. Yeah, I'll cast the tensor floating disc as a ritual, just so I can like put people on the. Okay. We can, like, I can have also time. carry someone. Okay. So you're taking ten minutes to cast that as a ritual. Yeah. All right, and you're taking ten minutes as well. So Jack is uh, kind of looking to try to start a conversation. The two of them that he knows the best are currently working away and tracing uh, the, their hands through the air. Magical symbols are starting to glow and grow around them. Uh, have you met Jack before? Mm, yes. He was mm -hmm. with us when we were traveling yep. in Aquain. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you met him in Aquain, actually. The young knight, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Not looking quite so knightish right now. Right. Actually dressed in nothing more than simple leathers. Uh, not carrying a sword at the moment. Uh, but has this sort of uh, lopsided smile. Very genial person. So, you've done well? Relatively speaking. Well, that's good. Things are good uh, topside. I don't get a chance to really go up that much. I heard a whole lot of noise uh, in the last few months, but... I don't know what this town is like normally. Yeah, to be I honest, I'm not I sure if there is I don't live here. Yeah. I am visiting, and I've noticed some strange things, and people changing shape and whatnot. So you've seen some of the shapeshifters? Yeah. Yeah. I, we've killed a couple of them. You have? Okay. Uh, who were they? Or rather, who were they pretending to be? One was the counselor. Uh, Alistair? Uh, yeah. Alistair. Or his assistant? Alistair. Oh, the counselor? Yeah, I killed him. He, so, Alistair Woodcomb is gone? No. No, he's a chip shifter. Oh, so the took, real took, Alistair is still... Took his form. Okay. And... Peter Cantor is going. And you're sure it's the, casting. you're sure it's the same one. Sure as I'm going to be. This is tricky business. I bet. It's a nice sword you got there, by the way. That's Lucille. Nice to meet you, Lucille. I had a sword. I don't know where it went to. Uh, didn't have a name, so I guess there's that. But I had had it for quite a while. Perhaps we can find you a new one. Uh, maybe. Once we're outside. So we're, we're leaving soon, right? Yeah. Cause Just need to check something. I won't be able to go topside with you guys, but um, I want to see you out safely, just to make sure. He tries to make sort of conversation. What is the air elemental doing in the meantime? It circles around everyone, okay. making sure, keeping an eye on everything. Okay. There's a little um, bit of extra dust being kicked up by the air elemental. Yeah. Um, if anybody mouths anything to me, I might do something more, but... It's an ability that people know I have. <laughs> uh, well, you're you're sensing Jack's conversation. Jack looks over at you from time to time, and he, you can tell he's kind of curious because he's never seen you in an elemental form. He's seen you take animal forms before. Yeah, uh, I was always fascinated by those. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's new. He kind of gestures over at the air elemental. Yeah, she has a bunch of different shapes. She stay that way now, or does she? It's hard to tell when she's going to turn back. Yeah. Or turn Looks again. over. So can you whistle in that form? I try. Uh, make a performance check. I'm rolling like nothing higher than a two, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> That's cocked. Sixteen. Okay. <laughs> uh, you kind of realize this strange request that Jack makes. And you also remember, though, that one of the things he loved to do was sing. It was one of the, one of the things he, he always joked that he was probably going to be a bard someday and never did. Um, and with the, the winds you have around at first, you kind of start to mouth a whistle, and then you realize, no, I am wind. 
And so it starts from a very simple sort of whistle and then suddenly becomes this complex polyphony of multiple howling uh, whistles at once. I'd like uh, to point out that that's the third time that I have passed a charisma based <laughs> skill thing <laughs> in this entire uh, campaign. <laughs> And uh, Jack looks on appreciatively. It needs a bit of work, but I think we can make this work. Um, how long she, can she stay like this? I'm not aware. I know a couple of people who would be happy to have a, a wind instrument, uh, a collection of wind instruments. I don't even know what to call it, but I think they would find that would fill out the band pretty well. There's a... A guitarist I know in particular was always saying that he'd love to have a little more fill behind him. But I don't think that's kind of what he meant, but it could be interesting. So the conversation goes on like that for a while. Your disc manifests into into existence, uh, hovering just beside you. And you finish your incantation uh -huh. for... The tech magic. The tech magic. Um, so hop on, whoever's ready. And the... Um, you see... Amrun's eyes go pale blue and white uh, as the effect of, of the spell, which you've seen before, takes takes hold. You look around, and presumably you're looking at Remy, mm -hmm. um, and there is definitely an aura of magic around him. Uh, it seems to be um, largely um, uh, sort of greenish aura around him like a poison. Make uh, an arcana check. Fourteen. Fourteen? Um, as you look at him, um, there's something on the edge of what you're seeing, but you're not quite sure what it is. It's like the aura is not uh, smooth. There are these strange peaks of energy, but you cannot determine any detail from it. Interesting. It's like a magical poison. I don't think I've seen one of these before. Is it going to be all right? And he steps forward to hmm. uh, to him. Hey, Remy, you got to uh, get over this, right? I don't know if this will do anything, but uh, I will uh, hold up the banner, smack it in the ground and give everyone in the area freedom of thought which gives them an advantage on saves against fear charm and mind control in case the mind control thing gives them a bonus or something okay um there is a a, a rush which almost looks like a wave cresting out in all directions from this banner uh jacks kind of looks back in surprise and then as he realizes that the ethereal wave is not actually composed of water which washes over him he's kind of Surprised and impressed. That's that's something new. Yeah, uh, I made it myself. You see that it kind of washes up and around Aleel, but does not actually wash over him. Mm. Um, and Aleel looks concerned. What is going on? It's a magic to attempt to remove. He is out of balance. Mm. Yeah, he looks poisoned. Magically poisoned. Oh well, it was a long shot. Um, Manner back. Do we notice anything else about him? Like, because I'm assuming we're focusing on Remy a little more because we know he might be a sketch bag. So, while you're focusing on him, make another insight check. The yeah, only two of you know that. Three plus. It's not as good. <laughs> plus five, so eight. Um, eight. I mean, you don't see the magical aura that's around him. He does seem to be sort of sitting there dazedly and uh, um, kind of um, gloss glass eyed. Uh, Jack steps back a couple of feet and grabbing his head. Ah! Ow! Oh, what the hell? Are you okay? Uh, it's like a knife in my my head. Huh. Is it still there, or was it only a one banners, thing? Banners never done that before. Yeah. What's going on? And you can see a little bit of blood dribbling out of, of Jack's nose. Bandage. <laughs> Random cloth. <laughs> Random cloth. Um, you can see him, his, his face is now going red, and you can see him kind of massaging his forehead as if a massive headache has just struck him. Yeah. 
Uh, everyone keep an eye out. This might be another attack. Uh, make... what, what do you see when you look at him? Hmm. What do you see when I look at him? At whom? Jack? Jack. Uh, you see the residue of um, magical force, not physical force, though. It seems to be permeating him. It's fading quickly and leaving nothing hmm. more than the pain behind. Make an intellect, uh, intelligence saving throw. Hmm. <laughs> 20. 20. Uh, you feel a sharp dagger in your mind. Uh, but then you kind of focus on the, the will of Paluxia and it blunts and disappears. Huh. Okay. I think there was something that was affecting Jack. It's not affecting him anymore, but when I got rid of it, it attacked me. Do I Make an intelligence saving throw. Okay. I don't think Oops, you can actually sorry. fail this, so... No, I got a two, so I can definitely yeah. fail uh -huh. this. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, six total. Wow. No, seven, because I can't add. I thought you have... Uh, I thought it's proficient in saving throws. It's like straightened. Oh, right. Does it's a mean? saving throw. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's whatever the saving throw is. Two plus your saving throw. <laughs> yeah, that's what unit. I did. Uh, they're supposed to be up there, I think. But, uh, it's plus. Uh, well, no, it yeah, is. Your saving throw is as calculated a, as a, a bit more. Yeah, as, as a, a wizard, wizard, you're proficient in, in saving throws. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. 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 Which means so you you'd have your bonus. plus five plus n four more would be nine plus okay. two would be 11. Where does the two come from? You're right. die. That is still a fail, yeah. which is surprising. Yep, uh, very surprising. If I have to make an Arcana roll. You take oh, you take eighteen psychic damage oh. as you feel your brain seem to cleave in two. And whoever you're, was on the disc is on the floor. <laughs> you uh, you well, not necessarily unless you're down. Hmm? No, because I have to make a concentration. You will have to make a concentration roll, but it's well, not not a guarantee. Well, he he um, rolled it and rolled like a four. Oh, yeah. you roll, rerolled it, and you okay, yeah. So as you as Jacob kind of falls to the floor, uh, having been kind of piled onto the the thing, uh, you feel you feel as though um, uh, oh shit, there's an extra step. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Uh, what is your current intelligence score? Twenty one. Okay, I didn't think I was going to roll that high. In fact, I don't think I can roll that high. Oh. Um, disc is still around. It's not concentration. Oh, it's not? Uh, okay. Jacob is on the disc. <laughs> Everything is fine. But as you feel kind of... Um, it feels as though all of your language centers were scrambled for, for a second, and there's a little receding uh, feeling of that, as though you literally were forgetting what you knew. Uh, and again, a small amount of blood dribbles out of your nose. Do okay. I know what the effect is? Uh, you're aware that you just took psychic damage. Each of you who's not just been attacked can roll an inside check. Higher than a two. No, it's a two. Wow. It's a five. So wow. You get 20 or below five. You get a three? <laughs> yeah. okay. That is the fourth two that I've rolled. <laughs> and I have magic vision on... Uh, the magic vision actually doesn't make a difference in this case. Uh, but you notice that Remy's eyes switched to him, and then he heard, then he uh, saw the pain in his brain. Then his eyes go go glassy again. Um, can I have that random rag back, Jack? Uh, yeah, sure. I go and I tie it around Remy's eyes so he can't see. Blindfold. I look at you confused. So does Jack. <laughs> well, what are you doing? I think something may be possessing Make Remy an intelligence saving throw. Him. Oh, actually, no, never mind. Never mind. I You're am fine. going to try to grapple Remy. Okay. He's not moving. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to try to, like... Maybe he's possessed or yeah. something's acting through him. So there wasn't a second attack against me at all? No. Or, no. Okay. Um, I realized that it... Uh, uh, oh, actually, no, there is. You have to make a, an intelligence saving throw. Okay, that was an 18. 18? Okay, you're fine. Uh, you, did, again, sense the pressure, but it you kind of washes off you literally like it's trying to hit something of water. Uh, yeah, something is definite. Uh, was... Was Remy... A spellcaster of any sorts? What? No, he was a he was a bladesman. He he carried 
a short sword and a dagger and was pretty he's, adept at them. He's currently attempting to attack myself, and I believe he's what so hurt you, you were with the city guard, and now you're a thief. As you see, uh, Jack look uh, confused for a second, and then uh, squint. I'm going to... And then fall over. I'm going to fling Remy. Okay. Wait. <laughs> I say as he goes flying. <laughs> um. Um, I need a, a DC 13 strength save. Okay. Uh, okay. So you throw Remy across the room. Yep. You're disturbed as you see Remy kind of flying out, flopping, mm -hmm. and then all of his limbs adjust and he lands, still blindfolded. Okay. Uh, so he doesn't. He made the save? He made the save. Okay, mm. so he still takes half of it. Was he tied up? Uh, yes. No, okay. no you, 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 you released everybody from the bonds yeah. first. Uh, I am going to call upon Palexia. Okay, we're going to roll initiative, actually. Uh, no, so he, he still takes... He will take that damage. Yes. Uh, so, oh. he takes... That's eight... He takes five bludgeoning damage. Okay. Magical. Uh, he skids across the, the now solid floor where the water had once been. And we will roll initiative. Uh, Jack is unconscious on the ground. Uh, drooling, actually. It's higher than a two. Mm -hmm. Still single digits, but higher than a two. I'll do the countdown just to make sure <laughs> we keep it in order here. Uh, wow. You may be rolling better than a two, but it doesn't seem like I have much capacity to do so. Uh, let's see. Oops, let me get that. So I've been like doing my in saves and whiz, wisdom saves like way too low this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> this hasn't been a lot of in, uh, intelligence. There's saves. almost no uh, in saves. Wisdom is usually the one that happens. Yeah. yeah. So Still, twenty to twenty-five. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Ooh, look Ooh. at you. Uh, Still. Yes. Uh, Fifteen to twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, Ten to fifteen. Ten. Once, once we add modifiers. Uh, five to ten. Eight. Eight. All right. Actually, one quick roll. Oh, well. Real, Aleel rolled a natural twenty for his initiative. Nice. All right. Aleel can balance the fuck out of him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, starting with Aleel. Um, hmm. Aleel circles around. He doesn't have any weapons on him. Uh, yes, um, he has a dagger because we gave him one. Oh, you gave him the dagger, right. He'll circle around to kind of block the entrance you guys came in mm -hmm. uh, and kind of hold in the dagger in case it comes close. Clark. Uh, Clark will also arm himself and step towards Remy. Okay. We're going to do this theater of the mind, so assume that generally things are within range unless I say they're not. Uh, okay. I'm going to point out that he was not flung because he succeeded. He just takes half the damage. Okay. So he's still... He actually would have pushed off of you surprisingly and actually did want to get some distance. Okay. Uh, but he managed to lie, land without without taking too much damage. Okay. So, so cause he controlled if, if, if he left my range, then wouldn't I have gotten been able to get an attack. No, of involuntary uh, movement does not trigger attacks of opportunity. Yes, but, but if he was pushing off. If he was the one pushing off of me. It doesn't count as his movement because he's working on your action. Basically, he leaned into your throw, and it was still your action which caused him to move. Okay. Hmm. Um, not how the ability works, but okay. Which ability? It's my whirlwind. It's not flung. It does not. The character. Oh, I thought you were actually just throwing him. No. Oh, okay. No, okay. that's it's the actual ability. So if the saving throw is, is successful, the target uh, takes half the bludgeoning damage and isn't flung away or not prone. Okay. So it wouldn't have moved. He he did move because basically you let go of him at that point, uh, okay. but he did move outside yeah. of your range. Yeah. So he's still within melee the range. So okay. Jonas is in as well. Just uh, Zach is. Keep him so he's still away, in yeah. my square. Is but, basically. Yeah, Essentially, yeah. yeah. Adjacent squared, effectively. Is no, he? because I have to be in his square yeah. for the, the effect. But, yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's not get too hung up on that detail. 
Uh, Zakis? I'll cast level three detect dots on him before okay. he dies. Oh, that's an interesting one I hadn't thought of. All right. Um, yeah. Like if he if he's with the old library, I want I want to find out as much. You as I get can. nothing. nothing. No yet. thought whatsoever. Okay. Can I push and deeper? It's very strange. Um, he takes an action to push deeper. Yeah. So that's be next round. But the very first thing you receive is absolutely nothing. It is as though he is not there. Which is very strange to you. Not there as in not at the location where I'm focusing uh, to detect dots. Like if it was an illusion, would I pick him up elsewhere? Or? If it was an illusion, you would not even be able to connect to the mind. Okay. You feel like you have connected to the mind, but the mind is an utter blank. Uh, as though hidden to you. Okay. Um, okay, that's Zakis. Elzera. Uh, I'm going to take two slamming attacks okay. at on him. Um, well, that's a 17. 17, okay. Does that hit? Uh, that's a hit, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, ooh, almost max damage. Uh, so that is uh, 20 damage. Ooh, Magical okay. bludgeoning. As you slam down upon the body, uh, which is now in this weird crouching position, uh, it lets out a, a, a hissing snarl. Uh, do any of you speak uh, under common? Nope. I, okay. No. Uh, and my, the language. my second attack is a 21. Uh, 21 hits, absolutely. Uh, that is 18. Uh, 18? 18 metal okay. bludgeoning damage. You see Remy's body being kind of pummeled and crushed. Uh, one of the arms is broken and at a weird angle. Um, you can see that where you kind of hit him, slammed him on the shoulder, the shoulder's definitely dislodged. Uh, the body looks terrible, uh, but it's kind of looking up at you. Uh, oh, it's its turn. So, uh, and as a bonus, mm -hmm. I'm going to use. I'm going to heal too. Okay. Now make an intelligence saving throw. As its eyes focus on you. Fifteen. Fifteen is enough. Uh, you feel your intellect slowly dissipating and you kind of just shift it to another part of your being this strange amorphous form that you have uh, then it will try to move uh, it's going to try to scramble by allele that means that uh, you all three will have opportunity attacks against it the 19 19 is a hit I'm rolling really good damage with these two. That's another 18. Okay. Another 6 and another 7. Are you going to take a... 24. 24 is a hit. Um, this is with the uh, the Sax, which has uh, recently killed a queen. Ah, yes. And it's glowing funny, so we'll see it what happens. It is kind of funny. We'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, it's not even that nice. Let's roll this one instead. Uh, five damage. Five damage. Five Roll damage. an additional d4. Uh, five and uh, three is eight damage. As you see, the the glow of the sword actually pulse a little bit when you hit, or the sorry, the the yep. sax. Yep. Uh, glow a little bit when you when you hit. Mm -hmm. uh, so the sax now has an additional d4 of um, shoot. I knew which one it was just a second ago. Uh, radiant? Uh, radiant damage, thank you. Okay. Um, and it counts as a magic weapon. Okay. Uh, you. And are you taking an opportunity attack? Yeah. Sorry, how much damage was that? Eight? Eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he gets to make a save against Sacred Flame. Okay. No. <laughs> now I'm rolling the twos. Do I get an attack of opportunity too? Uh, no, because you are because actually, do you have war? Uh, not warcaster is yeah. appropriate. You do okay. Yep. Yeah, warcaster is the one that lets me cast a spell. 
13 radiant. Okay. I'll make with my quarter staff with my D. Sure. Damage. Hit it with a quarter staff. <laughs> mm-hmm. 14 plus one. That's a hit. Yeah. Conk. Four, three damage. <laughs> look, right. look at Zach is doing the melee. Yeah. So, as it attempts to back away in this strange sort of way, you see its limbs now, uh, a couple of them are bent and broken, it's having difficulty moving away. Uh, first, the uh, the the uh, pummeling, essentially, from the air elemental kind of pushes its shoulders down heavily, crunching into the ground. You come in with a sack, so that extra little bit of light, surprisingly, uh, uh, to both to you and to it, mm. uh, as it cuts cleanly into its... Uh, into its upper uh, rib cage, um, you bring in the, the sacred flame, which seems to erupt right from its center, kind of blowing through the back of this mm. person for a moment, and you kind of book with the, uh, with the quarter <laughs> staff at the time. end, uh, as the as the body kind of goes <laughs> limp. Wow. All of you make a perception check. Two. 17. 28 with a natural 20. Okay, I'm actually illegal Wait, as well. Mm-hmm. Natural one. 23. Four total. Okay, so other than Zakis, who's like, I hit a thing and it died. Wow. And you're still staring down at this body, which is this this human who's just been beaten to crap is all of a like sudden. Is he instantly dead almost, or do I still have a chance to like force some thoughts into him? Or like- uh, From the connection you had from his mind, uh, you're still sensing something. Okay. But the body is definitely dead. As the three of you see about... Um, how far can it go? Uh, <laughs> about five feet away, on the opposite direction, because it doesn't have a large range for that. As this strange thing just sort of appears out of nowhere. At first, you're you're looking at it, going, "Is it is it is it a rock with legs?" It looks like the rock has a lot of curves on it. Well, actually, I have a mini for this guy. Mm, so I think I do too. Uh, I can find it. Nah, I can't find it. What it looks like is a brain with legs, strangely enough. Mm-hmm. Now, if uh, uh, if you would like to make an arcana roll, you may have heard of something like this before, but the difficulty will be high. Can I make it too, or am I still, because I didn't do the perception? Uh, because you didn't see it yet. 10. 16. Okay. Um, you've not actually heard of this thing directly, but you have heard stories that have been told on the road of people whose, whose minds have been consumed and strange creatures leap out of them. Uh, that is its turn. Amrun, you see the, the brain eater. Are... Um, hmm. Uh, well... This has very little chance of working, but I'll try it anyways. Um, I am going to ask Paluxia for intervention. Ooh, okay. To uh, restore this, uh, restore this man to himself, and punish the being that attacked him, consumed him, controlled him, okay. whatever. So. You do get the sense you might be reaching for one too many things there, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's because they're kind of the same thing, but yeah. Uh, so, I have a 10% chance. 54. Nope. Okay. So I can't try again. For so you, you you call on the, the, the being of Paluxia and kind of get the, the equivalent of, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yep. Back around to the top Ask with Elil. Uh, uh, I try. will move over next to Jack. Okay. Uh, make a medicine check real quick. Yeah, I've got a cantrip for that next round. Uh, it's a, a nine. A nine? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's down on the ground drooling unconscious. Yep. Uh, Alil is going to try to move over with the dagger. You can see that his movements aren't exactly, especially from your practice motion, he's not very good at this. Mm. Uh, this is clearly not his, his forte. And that is definitely a miss. As he kind of goes forward and tries to stab at the thing, but it's so small and, and quickly it just sort of skitters out of the way. Uh, Clark, you are up though. 
Uh, Clark would like to stab the brain on the ground. All right. Um, Go for the stabbing. All right. If you you start using the sacks again? Yeah. The brain on the he hasn't changed weapons. That's a natural one. Oh. Ah. As you stab down and the sacks gets wedged into the ground a little bit, you're going to have to spend an action to pull it out. Uh, uh, or an attack, actually, I should yeah, say. Yeah, let's do that. We'll pull it out in the second attack. Okay. And as a cunning action... Excuse me, an action surge. Mm, yeah, an action surge. We'll stab a second time. All right. Technically a third. Um, 22 this time. Hey. 22 is a hit. All right. So two and three is five, and four is nine. Okay. Now four of it being radiant. Uh, as the as the sax kind of connects this time, you see it kind of slice into one part of it. It feels so weird as you're moving through. It does not seem like it cuts through flesh. Mm. It is almost as though you're cutting through mashed potatoes that have been left out and gotten cold. Right. Yik. Uh, <laughs> Zakas, you're up. So do I see the thing that they're hitting? Uh, you kind of look up and you see that they've now kind of surrounded this brain with legs. And is it's that a, what I'm connected to? Like You kind of get the sense that that is the thing you're connected to. The locus of the mind seems to be there. And I still feel nothing for thoughts? Nope. Do I get to make the arcana roll for what it is? Or? Sure. Eight. Plus. I believe you have a plus 13. Plus eight. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So... 21. Okay. As you look up and see what they're surrounding, there's a party which it goes, huh, so that was a true story. There, You remember one of the stories that you, that you found in one of the books. It was a collection of folk tales. And the folk tale was of a farmer who had been acting kind of strangely uh, and had gone uh, and sold his farm, uh, killed his wife, and was on the run. And it was very out of character for that particular farmer. They surrounded it, and they discovered that the farmer literally had lost his mind. As the body was nearly dead, and out came a creature. They called it an intellect devourer. And at that title, at that remembrance of it, Mm -hmm. you shudder a little bit. Because the further notes were uh, that it does literally eat someone's brain. And it does not have to be physically next to it to do so. Make a perception check. Or insight check, actually. Fuck. Three plus five, so eight. Okay. You can't tell anything about its intentions at the moment. Well, I'm assuming that's what like brain stabbed me earlier and like swished my memories. Very so, definitely, it's what it's what. Yeah, did it, yes. so it's getting a firebolt. Actually, no, it's getting it's getting a chromatic orb at level two, and it's fire. Okay. Fifteen plus. That's a hit. Yeah, yeah you get plus ten. How many dice is chromatic orb? Three d six base, so forty six for level two, I think, or d eight, sorry. Forty eight. Pew, pew. Eight, five, ten. Seventeen, fire. Seventeen, fire. Nice. A little explosion erupts around it, kind of surprising you a little bit as you just sort of pull back the sacks and <clears throat> in front of you. Uh, it seems to singe all over, and you can actually see little elements of the gray matter literally singed and burned away and falling off in flakes. Hmm. It looks in bad condition. Elzara. I'm going to take a whack at it. Okay. Um, yep. It's a little bit surrounded right now, but you can move over to it easily. I, I can be within, like, one mm-hmm. inch, so. I can fit <laughs> places. Uh, that is a 15 on the die, plus 8, so 23. That's a hit. That's a hit. Another 18. As you come through and swirl over to it, the winds form in these terrible uh, uh, gusts and just sort of pummel it, hitting and hitting and hitting until the whole thing goes like a pumpkin. 
uh, and it seems to be utterly and destroyed. I'm going to take my second shot and hit it again, just for <laughs> good measure. You just got to splatter the bit. The I, I, all I, over saw, I saw his <laughs> face go white. <laughs> He's the smart one. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Okay, as you, as it, it doesn't move, so it's easy enough to hit and smash again. And sure enough, you, you smash it into gooey little bits that uh, Clark makes a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> sure. I'm far enough away, right? I'm still going like this. Yeah, you're over by the body. It's yeah. about uh, 10 dex. five feet away. So, 18. 18. As you deftly step out of the way of the little bits and pieces, they go flying across the room. Uh-huh. Uh, Allele is not so successful. Uh, and a large chunk of burned brain matter hits him square in the face and, <laughs> and he's very quickly just sort of loses what composure you've seen of him. He's been very, very calm throughout mo- most of this. Suddenly there's that sort of, ah, 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 get it off. So that's what it takes to unbalance him, I see. <laughs> he, he takes a deep breath, calms down after that. Um... Based on what you know, mm-hmm. um, you look over at Jack again, and you realize that he's not unconscious. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> His mind has been turned to mush. Can he be... Do I know of a way of getting it back? Powerful magics can restore anything. Okay. But I don't know. I wouldn't know about it, like, off the top of my head. You don't know those kinds of magics. Mm. Um, well, I'm next to him. I'm going to... Uh, Stabilize, cantrip, spell, uh, whatever it was called. Uh, the other thing you you realize in Spread retrospect, uh, Zakis, is its attitude. The brain was turning, and it was turning towards Jack. If it had had a chance, it would have inhabited his mind. Yeah. Uh, I do spare the dying. Okay. Uh, if he's still kind of. Uh, then, he, um, he seems to be breathing steadily, but there's no there's no indication of Jack there. the The usual lackadaisical smile is completely slackened now. He's gone. Um, I've read about these things before in a book, and I'll quote the title and the author and the date where I read it. Uh, that that's was fine. A devourer. I might be able to save him tomorrow. He's not dead. No, but his brain is scrambled. There might be powerful magics that can restore him, but. Yes, I know you some. Take, you can take him to Emerald, unless you can do it yourself, which would yes. be preferred. That's literally. <laughs> I can do it myself. I just need to rest first. And rest I, seems no like a wonderful left. idea. <laughs> we should, we should leave here. Uh, do we know if? And he looks over at Jacob's kind of slack face. Is he the same? I don't know. Uh, we should carry them. I'll carry Jack. Out of here. Uh, well, you, you we, we literally we just still move over and pick him up as you're in the we, We've, still, we've still got the disc. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think she moved over specifically to sure. pick up Jack. We can put the kid on the disc. Um, Mainly because I have a plan once we get to the edge of the sewer. Um, yeah, if we need to find a safe place for them, because uh, whether he's working for Woodcomb or not, I doubt any of the guards know that. Do you think... Um, Alexia would allow us to stay, all of us, to stay in her mansion. I can probably talk to my sister, but this is dangerous. Well, yes. Mm. It seems to be a we trend where we become... We need to talk to the Reeve. Yes, also. Uh, and Adrian. Definitely. When we get to the, uh, to the edge of the sewers, I'll drop my form and polymorph him into a small creature that can be carried. Mm. And this is something that you're relating, I'm assuming, because she's speaking with the yeah. Orin language. Uh, and because so we need to, we'll have an hour so we need to have a plan of where we're going yes um maybe Alila can go back to Alexia explain the situation get the okay and if she agrees to us coming over he'll let us know then you can do the polymorph I can go speak to her excellent and I'll translate what Elzar was telling me to, by the way. Um, mainly because... Just be careful with him in case the boy is the same. That was... unnerving. Mm. <clears throat> um, Quite. I go over to Elil 
and I pressed to digitate his face <laughs> so there's no goo on it anymore. Um, I didn't realize any of it was still on. I, and you can see again the composure drop for just a brief second as he uh, And then I take the piece that he had swiped off of him and stick it in a vial. Yeah, it was good. Cork. Okay. Um, Bag of preservation. I was going to do that too, actually. <laughs> There's plenty of bits and pieces if you're willing to scrape it off the floor and walls. Yeah, um, with, uh, with something that's not my hand, preferably. <laughs> what would that be? I don't know, like a stick. <laughs> a mage <Okay>. hand? <laughs> yes, mage hand would work. That is what that's for. Yeah. Um, touching the ooky stuff. <laughs> touching the goo. Uh, I will uh, ask Zachas to translate this um, to Buddy, um, but to make sure he heard what was going on so to make sure that that is relayed yeah to like, sorry to that him. that what because Ilio was there when jack was explaining what was mm -hmm. going on yeah. so to make sure that the people who that his contacts are contacted basically he mentioned something about dealing with someone at the library and the reeve the, the reeve and adrian the head of security the reeve has been suspicious of me since I returned. I'm afraid my sister's actions may have also put that suspicion on, but I should be able to convince her to talk to the Reeve. Well, now that she knows you were telling the truth about what's down here. There is knowing what the truth is and still accepting what I have become. Well, uh, closing the portal was certainly useful. Whatever changes happened, I mean... It was necessary, and it is my duty. Thank you for helping me. Now, shall we go? Yes. You make your way out of the room, back up through the maze of sewers. Unerringly, it seems, uh, Aleel is able to guide you back through. Mm -hmm. It is almost as though he has an instinctual knowledge of exactly where he has been. I also have the bracer thing. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. You can use that. Uh, it, it seems like a similar sort of effect. As he leads you back up to the surface, I will wait at like underground at the entrance uh, until I get the okay to polymorph him and to where I'm going. Okay, Alil takes off once he gets up up ground, looking back uh, left and right. I believe it was nighttime when you went down. Mm. It was the end of the day. Yeah. Yes. Because so. um, we went right away. You wanted some cover, I think, from the dark. No, we just went right away. Okay. Um, so, but it would have been after the break into the mansion. Yeah. So. so, under the cover of darkness, anyway, he vanishes pretty quickly. Almost as though he becomes one with the dark and the light. At the edge, you then resume your humanoid form? Um, I'm going to stay in this form until I get the okay. From Aleel? Uh, yeah. Okay. Until I know where I'm going. Okay. Because I have a better chance of protecting myself uh. and... We, uh, uh, your friends. Like, we've been walking for half an hour to get in mm -hmm. there, so would you have any time left after the flight? I have five hours. And... Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, right. half, I, it's half of I my level. I think the disc yeah. lasts for hours, is it? The tensor's floating disc? Mm. Yeah, even uh, if I think it's an we hour. cast it once it okay. hits the end of that anyway. Yeah. So I, I have yeah. five hours. In Jacob yeah. has not moved from yeah. the position you put him in on the top of the disc. Um, he is stable, right? Yeah, I can right. he seemed okay. I healed him. I, I healed him up the same time I healed up everyone else. So. Is he like drooling and stuff like Jack is, or kind of? Well, mm. I have the materials. I just need the energy. All right. So you're gonna wait there until the uh, there's a knock at the door, mm. uh, <laughs> or at the neighbors. I hope that comes across in the microphone, otherwise we sound crazy. Um, there's construction next door. <laughs> <laughs> it's a busy city, and there's construction always going on, yeah. especially after some of the destruction where the the uh, the uh, wild hunt came through. <laughs> after about an hour, uh, Aleel comes back, and he's not alone. The Reeve is actually with him, although not showing his badge of office, which normally would be shining pretty easily. It seems as though he's taking that off for the moment, perhaps Dominic, to be a little more stealthy. Right, like Dominic, that. yep. We weren't far from the Dominic central Marsh. plaza, were we? Not too far. We might want to meet them there because it will stop anything 
demonic, fiendish, uh, whatnot from going in there. So if there's something possessing them... Well, I don't want to move Jack up top and outside of polymorph. That's why I'm staying down. Yeah, well, I was going to say, if we polymorphed him, we could just carry him there and uh, it at least... Yeah, it's a, but it's an open area. Else. We Still. also don't yeah. want to arise suspicion if, if anybody might be watching. Like, Yeah. Do you see anybody watching us, Clark? You're good at spotting people. You can, take, so you can take a look to make sure you're hidden sure. well enough. You can either make an, a, a stealth roll or you can make a perception roll. Perception. Or El Zero is also good at so, seeing people. Um, yeah, I'll uh, take a look around too. To make sure we're not getting spied on. <laughs> no. 27. I took a look back down the 11. hallway. <laughs> you had chosen this entrance specifically because it was going to be a little bit off the beaten path as well anyway. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody's paying any attention to it. Um, we seem clear. Good. So as the hour arises, your footsteps coming by. You see Alil having rushed, it seems like, and the Reeve has, is with him. Apparently whatever discussion they were able to have was happened really quickly. And the Reeve came. The Reeve is a busy person in charge of the justice in the city, but the Reeve came when Jack was in trouble. Uh, and the Reeve looks uncharacteristically perturbed. As you recall, the Reeve also had a very nonchalant attitude towards a lot of things, very relaxed. But this particular point uh, looks very concerned. Uh, I came as soon as I found out what... I'll for convenience drop at okay. this point now that we have a bit more backup. And the Reeve kneels down beside Jack's body, kind of turning his face from side to side. What is this? Poison? Something devoured his mind. He, his body is still living. Uh, Amrin thinks he can maybe do something to help tomorrow mm -hmm. when he has more energy and a, a time to study what he needs to do. Is there nothing you can do tonight? I'm afraid I'm We're all a little exhausted. exhausted. I have no strength left for the spell that's required. All right. Uh, do you have he, somewhere you plan to go? I can make a few suggestions. Right now we don't. I had planned to polymorph him into a small animal for easy and discreet transport. Um, I'm sure he would love that. He's, uh, He's been does. an eagle before. Mm. So. Oh, he didn't mention that. You could change him into a cat and I could take him to the hotel. True. Um, or the inn. Uh, as the Reeve kneels down beside, kind of gently holding onto Jack's face, all of you can make an insight roll. Not natural. 18. 7. 12. Uh, cancel that. 10. 10, 12, what'd you get? Non-natural 20. Non-natural 20. <laughs> As the rest of them are discussing tactics and plans, uh, you kind of look over, and for the first time you notice that the Reeve is more than simply concerned. The Reeve is genuinely frightened of what has happened to someone who is very close to them. Uh, much Aww. closer than you might have expected. It's like, oh, that's uh, they have a very strong yeah. mask, and they wear it well, wear it yeah. well. But you see in the in the tender uh, use of the hand on the on the face, uh, just the concerned glances every once in a while. Even while discussing the tactics in a very flat manner, there's a, a definite concern going on. We we know that he has been wanted for whatever. I'm sure he did not do knowing him. Don't worry about that. That's not a concern at the moment. I just want to make sure that he's okay. Everyone can hopefully restore him. How confident are you in this? If it's something that can be restored, I'm pretty sure I can do it. Is there anything you need? No, I have the supplies. I just need a, I need a solid night's rest. All right. Um, if you don't mind, I have a couple of places where we can go. But if you sure. feel there's somewhere more safe, then we can go there. You, you know the town yeah. better than most right. people. And um, he polymorph. walks out towards the edge of the alley, kind of holding you to hold back. I'll polymorph him into a small cat and okay. nuzzle. It is a little bit disturbing mm -hmm. because it's a really dumb cat at this point. <laughs> uh, oh, no. It's it's literally one of those ones where it just sort of stares at you and drools, and it doesn't have enough intelligence to even close its mouth at this point. Well, also, uh, instead of like cuddling up against you or something, it's just dead weight. It, it, is, it is pulling the yep. I'm a protester cat. Yep. Uh, I'm as heavy as possible. I defy gravity. Yep. I'll like kind of wrap it up in my cloak. And... Um, you see the, the Reeve uh, go to the edge of the alleyway, holding his hand out behind him, uh, looking out. Just a minute. 
the Reeve steps up straight, pulls out his emblem of office, puts it on, and you hear him speaking briskly uh, to what are presumably a couple of guards. Mm -hmm. um, the guards are given orders, and you find he, uh, he returns back to the alley. Come, quickly, no one will bother us. As you come out to the uh, to the, the roadway, you see that the guards have actually been stationed on uh, different alleyways that there would be potentially traffic, and are actually moving to keep anyone from coming down those nice. those alleyways. Uh, they they are not looking back. They they you heard kind of a distinct order that they are to mind their own business when it comes to this matter, and you get the impression this is not an order that the reeve hasn't given before. After about 15 minutes, uh, the Reeve comes to what looks like a, uh, a nice manor house, two floors, right up on the street, doesn't have any land of its own, uh, and then produces a ring of keys and very quickly unlocks the door. In here, this is a, this is a safe place. Uh, and as you come in, you can actually see that the outer rooms, the windows you could see through on the outside, are more or less facades that have been set up to look like a house that's being act uh, being used, but it brings you into central rooms which do not have any exterior windows. Mm -hmm. Lay them down there, and you can see there's a, a cot laid out in that room. I'll drop polymorph and like make sure that he's like comfortably laying. In, in the interior, um, and this is something that you're actually kind of surprised at because this is not a, not an unfamiliar trick for you to have done. Mm. Uh, Basel has shown you a couple of safe houses that he has around the city. It looks as though this is a, a, a staging area where things could be done from, and no one would know. Um, and it looks not entirely dissimilar to exactly the same sort of thing Bazo has. Right. So finding the Reeve has this is a little bit surprising to you. Um, there's water and food if you need it. There's more cots upstairs if you need more places to rest. We won't be bothered here. Good. The building has some enchantment, enchantment on it, and I'll make sure that there's a extra patrol out front. If you excuse me, I've got to go arrange for that. But I will see you here back first thing in the morning. I go to sleep. Uh, I will do a four-hour watch. Well, uh, Aliel uh, also says, meditate. I'm going back to my sister's place. Um, if you need anything, I'll be there. Uh, should I drop by tomorrow morning? Uh, I would mind. say drop by with the Reeve. Okay. Oh. Actually, I, sorry, I forgot. Uh, I only need four hours because that's okay. what they changed elves to. Um, I just need the four hours meditation, so... Yeah, like it, in a few hours, I should be okay. Okay. Eight. Well, yep. the rest of you are, are, are taking the, the offer of sleep. Yeah. It does yeah. seem to be, again, a secure location. And weirdly enough, there are enough interior rooms that do not have exterior windows that are actually have their own individual locks as well. Uh, the rooms are very, very plain, nothing more than a cot and a small basin a pitcher for water, basically. Uh, there does seem to be a, 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 a commode in the middle of the building, mm -hmm. so you can even go take a dump without anybody having a clue you're even there. Cool. Um, I will, while I'm runs taking his rest, I'll watch over him and then I'll go take my four hours. Okay. There seems to be something equivalent to rest that overtakes Jack's body. Uh, same with Jacob as well. Um, there's no acknowledgement of anything whatsoever, but it seems to be uh, uh, at least a physiological reaction, a, a body reaction. Clark? Sleep. All right. Uh, and I'm assuming Zach is going to... It's funny how my D&D &D character routinely gets more sleep than I do. They get more sleep than any of us do. <laughs> they need it more, more than us do, I think. But uh, imagine not being able to type in the morning. I've only gotten two hours sleep, can't type today. I wish I could use that excuse. <laughs> I'm Rune, you wake, mm. feeling somewhat refreshed. You okay. have a vague memory of your dream. The dream feels like, as it fades quickly, a voice calling out to you, distant but urgent. Make an intelligent saving throw. Seven. You try to hold on to the dream, but it vanishes quickly. Huh. That's the worst. All you're left with is a sense of urgency. Well, I know why I feel a sense of urgency. I've got two patients. Um, 
Yes. You come back down to the two of them. You can see that Elzera is still on guard at this mm-hmm. point. Intending to them, like, making sure they're comfortable. <laughs> Wiping the drool off their face. <laughs> Make a medicine check as you've been spending time with them. Eight. Eight? Back, back to the single digit. No change. Well, I pull some vials of diamond dust out of my bag of holding. Despite the dim light, it, it glitters. I don't know if you even bother with actual lamps. There are lanterns here, but you can see fairly well, although you can't see any color. Um, if they're not on, I would turn at least one on so I can see properly, because this is a... Uh, oh, no, never mind. It's one action, so... I was thinking there was more to set up, but, uh... uh, I I wouldn't have bothered, personally, but... Yeah, yeah, everyone would turn some on so they can properly see things, and... It's uh, easy enough to turn a lantern on next to you with with, uh, prestigitation. Greatest spell ever. Um, And, uh... Yeah, so he, uh... Again, I'm assuming that, I mean, he has a lot of different powders he has to keep for different spells, so he's got them in, like, vi- basically small vials of, of appropriate amounts, so... He something, take, something labeled, hopefully. Hmm. Well... It's kind of silvery. Well, there's diamond Actually, dust, silver dust, and iron powder. They're all different enough that I'm assuming he would notice the difference. And, and you have a bag of holding, so it's yeah. actually sorted for you automatically. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like, give me the vial of this. Uh-huh. Um... Uh, so yeah, basically he'll take one out, um, he'll get, uh, probably Jack move to the center of the floor, just resting okay. on it, and then do a ritual circle around him. I'll help him and then go to sleep. Okay. Um, okay. It'll be done by gonna, the time you close your eyes. Are you going to wait for the, the the spell to be done, or just like, okay, you're in place? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll wait for, for the spell to be done, and okay. then... Uh, yeah, you feel a little bit drained. It has been a long day. Um, I mean, five more minutes. <laughs> yeah, just five um, more minutes. Yeah, I, I I do a little more preparation, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, the floor is a little dirty, but it's it probably hasn't yeah. been used for a while. But it's been just da, 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 and then I focus my will on Jack, and uh, it removes any penalty to his hit point maximum, Removes or restores any stats or a stat, I forget which. So uh, what are you casting? Well, actually, I think it does all of that. Although I think... But he wants to know the spell. I'd like to actually know what the yeah. spell oh, is. <laughs> greater restoration. Okay. Um, I just have all the thing, mm-hmm. and it does the thing. Oh yeah, just, I spend 100 gold of diamond dust, and it's done. Um, all right. Well, they do mention positive energy. Interesting. Um, oh, no, I can only do one. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to restore his mind, so okay. I would effectively end any reduction to uh, his intellect score. So, as you kind of spink- sprinkle the dust around, rub a little bit into your fingers and start to rub it onto his forehead to to draw attention to the, the, the effect. There you go. I um, put it in my hands and then... Like, Diamond. Welcome back. I've got lung cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> the the diamond dust holds in the air for a moment, almost as though it's forming over something, and then rapidly sinks in, disappears through his skin. And then, the instant it does that, his eyes shoot up wide, and he looks confused for a second. Hamrun? Yes. Your Uh and high level healing word on him. I give him a level five. No, level okay. four. I'm right there, by the way. Uh, you're still in the middle of sleeping. Yeah. God damn it, yeah. You and Clark are asleep. You decided to do this in the middle of the night. I wanted to do it as soon as possible. Yep. 10, 16. He gets 18 hit points back, anyways. Okay. So. Uh, he takes in a big deep breath, kind of instinctually. Oh. Actually, I do that all in one round. Heal. <laughs> uh, you couldn't do the other one because it's too Oh, hard. yeah, yeah, it's not a cantrip. 
Um, but he does get a moment to, to react, kind of looking at you, and again, for the second time in a day, in a 24-hour period anyway, looking up at you and saying, I'm room. And noticing actually my blue eyes as well. Right. Blue eyes and white. Which glow somewhat yeah. in, the, in the dim light. Mm-hmm. We have got to stop meaning like this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and he kind of sits back up, very sore back. still. Obviously, we get back. We get back to this. Uh, I go over to the kid, okay, and set him on the ground. Now I'll do the same thing. Okay, your gold. I'm glad I got plenty of diamond dust before the like, last time. You once again yeah. push the uh, cloud of diamond dust over his forehead, and it settles onto his skin, and there's no change in his condition. Hmm. What happened? It didn't work. It worked for me. It's possible there was no mind left. No, that that can't be. That can't be right. And I'll he moves over to the to the the bedside. Hey, kid, kid, are you in there? Oh yeah, uh, and I would have actually used the cantrip on the kid as well when we were taking them out. Which cantrip? The save the dying. Yeah, uh, um, you would know it had no effect. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, does the kid seem to be breathing? Or do he does seem to be breathing. Seem, okay. Yep. But he's um, poisoned. You don't know. Possibly. Um, the well, the spell, the same thing you did to Jack, did not seem to have an effect this time. Yeah. It sh- yeah. Um, I will do a lesser restoration, just in case the kid is still poisoned. Uh, that would get rid of the poison. I'll just give you an antitoxin. Save your spell slots. We don't know what uh, we're going into. It's only a level two spell. Uh, we might as well say we've been encountering a lot more poison recently. So. I mean, fair. Um, okay, so you're specifically choosing uh, poisoned? Yeah. Okay, because again, you have to choose one effect. Yeah. Um, and as you, you uh, uh, touch the side of his face, because it has no material components in this case, yep. uh, and speak uh, the words, which are what in this case? Oh. Oops. Um, Polexia, please purge these infirmities. Hmm. Um, with that, there's a pause. And then Jacob coughs. <coughs>, ah, <coughs> yeah. Turns on his side and spits out this green goo that sort of flows out of his body. Ew. Oh, oh here. Ah, I need water. I have ah. a vial. Vial. <laughs> Uh, actually, make a uh, make a dexterity saving throw to go and do that. Nine. As you find it no, evaporates ten. as it as it flows out okay. of him. That's fine. Uh, but as seems to be Jacob is awake and just he's he's got literally uh, well, not literally I suppose but as as most people who've ever had uh, uh, either bad food or just after they've thrown up from too much alcohol. Hairy tongue would be one way to describe this. It's an awful sensation that he's practically gagging on at this point. I need uh, what the water. And he takes the water greedily and drinks down. Is it like a uh, water skin? Uh, probably a water jug or something. Yeah, he takes like half of the jug down. It's kind of seems almost improbable for a kid his size. You're all right, kid. And J- uh, Jack slaps him on the shoulder. He had me going for a second there. He's gonna be all right. And he turns to you, right? I believe so. Um, All right. He should be healthy, unpoisoned, and his brain should not be eaten. So um, that really sucked," says Jacob. "I regret that we must inform you that Remy did not make it. He uh, was possessed by something called an intellect devourer. What's that? Something that eats your brain and then controls you. That's horrible. Yes." Yeah, it's it's. I'm gonna miss Remy. Thank you, again. Uh, maybe we need a little bit of relaxation after that. Yes, uh, there are cots over there. Uh, there's presumably some couches or something. You look over um, and you see all Zara probably snoozing at this point already. They, yeah, at this point I'm like okay. I'm gonna go sleep. Mm, room smells like, a little bit because the, the leftover vapors from the, the poison that he had are a little mm, bit rough. Prestigitation. Prestigitation. <laughs> little thaumaturgy to wind it out. <laughs> um, 
Occasionally, I make doors open and close. Jacob, in particular, some seems to be still quite tired, uh, but he is lucid once again. Yeah, I'll give him a say. Like, how many fingers do you see? Uh, what day? Uh, what uh, year is it? Uh, what's your Why name? was I out for that long? And just, just answer the questions, kid. I need to know if your brain was affected. It's, it's, I mean, I don't even know what the year is now. No, that makes sense. What's your name? He looks over at Jack. Uh, there's a there's a look across his face, which is a combination of, is he for real? And make an insight check. I punch this guy. Mm, 17. 17. There's also a look of confirmation, as in, do I give this guy my real name? My name is Jacob. We met in Farhaven. Yes. Okay. You convinced me to leave there, and I've never been back. Well, you seem to be healthy. Uh, you might want to go sleep. I definitely want to go to sleep. He's practically asleep at that point. Jack gently lays him back down on the on the cot. Thanks again. He's a good kid, and well, as bad as it might seem that he got dragged into this, I actually think he's better off. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's in better shape than the last time we. Ran into him. Really? He was covered in cursed items he'd stolen. Oh. I will have to talk to him about that. Yeah. Uh, check your pockets. Do you have any loose items in your pockets? I think I keep everything in the bag, actually. Okay. Uh, it's just easier that way. He doesn't have to worry about organizing things. <laughs> True. Like, I need money. That way I can just steal one thing. And I can be done with it. Um, Jack uh, um, takes a swig of water for himself as well grimaces then wipes the edge of it off as he realizes that Jacob had a little backsplash in there <laughs> mm. um, and then he goes to sleep pretty quickly as well okay and I'll go back to meditating just keep an eye on people till morning Clark sleepy time you awake instinctively not from a sound, not from light, because there are no windows in this room. Right. But just out of instinct. Okay. You know it's morning. All right. You feel rested. And you can hear just the sounds of the house itself. You've been in places like this before, and you're actually kind of surprised that you didn't know about this one. It also looks remarkably well made. As in, people spent a lot more money than they typically would on something like this, too. Mm. So you're awake. Uh, Clark will wander around, okay. see about finding some food and drink. In that central area, you see Jacob and Jack both uh, sleeping peacefully. Uh, you see Elzera kind of uh, leaning up against the wall, probably, uh, sleeping. Or dead. They could all be dead. Uh, it could be that dream. I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, and you see Amrun kind of sitting down, uh, meditating. The I jug of water is there as well. He'll leave everybody be. Okay. Just take, you know, he'll, he'll have a, a bite to eat and some water to drink. And Morning, Clark. Clark. Clark will just wave, knowing that he's not looking. <laughs> Zakis. Yo. You awake with spells running through your mind. Spells you're going to choose for today, spells you still want to learn. What about those weird books that you never got around to reading yet? Yeah. Should you really read them? What yes. a silly yes. question. <laughs> you start for a moment as you realize this isn't my room. You've just been getting used to the idea of sleeping in your own bed again. Yeah. Only for a few days. Now you're already somewhere. You're not even sure where you are in the city. But you're awake. And you don't feel hurt. I'll take it. <laughs> Prop open your book. Start to memorize your spells for the day. Yes. I should probably do that. A little while later, Alzara, you're mm -hmm. already kind of aware there are people around, but you're, you've you heard... Um, Jack's fine. It's fine. Clark and... Well, you've heard Clark and Amrun also speaking, so you know that there's no alarm. Yeah. Uh, you do hear the sound of the front door lock opening. Actually, sorry, you hear the sound of a lock opening, but not from the front. 
I will, at that point, just stay there. Okay. Keep keep note, but stay there. Uh, and you hear the sound of a door opening from the back. Clark, they're not making much of an attempt to hide their sound either. Okay. Uh, but you do notice with some satisfaction it's a heavy door in the back and it closes rather quietly it's a well oiled latch and everything a second or two later Alil and the Reeve come in Argyll palm the pommel of his sax okay just as a force of habit uh, Alil comes in first looks around and uh, the Reeve practically bowls him over and moves into the room and walks over to Jack. Is is everything all right? And he kind of leans down towards the Jack's bedside. It did it work? Don't look at me. Is Do he I... asleep? And he kind of gestures over towards uh, towards Abra. He's busy. Hello, I'm sure everything worked. Ah, uh, did it work? Yeah, I'll stop meditating because I don't have really have to. I, yes. Can I guy get some sleep here, Jack, from the bed? Both of them are fine. Good. My sister would like to speak to you. All of you. Who's your sister? Uh, that's Elil oh, who's speaking. Oh, Elil. Okay, sorry. I thought it was the Reeve that came in. So tried, uh, both sister? of them came in. I've tried to use a different tone in here. Okay. Sure. When you have a moment, if everything is settled here, I'll take care of them. They'll be back to where they need to be. No one will know, mm -hmm. says the Reeve. Nice to see you again, Jack. Glad you're still alive. <sighs> you know, Don't. living's pretty good. I'd recommend it just about everybody. Mm -hmm. I'll make my way downstairs at that time, okay. you. Don't make yourself a stranger. Oh. I never need help. I didn't want to involve anybody I didn't have to. And from everything I've heard, you guys have been pretty busy on your own. But I think it's involved in the same thing, so. Maybe. It's a big world. A lot of stuff happening. Yeah. We have our fingers in a lot of pies, as some people say. My stomach rumbles. Mmm, <laughs> pie. <laughs> um, you've kind of found uh, hard bread and cheese. Yeah, it's a little, little bit, little bit a biscuit or stale. His way. Um, mm. It's a little hard. It needs the water to even soften it up to eat. It's, it's, it's the kind of stuff you leave there because you know it's not going to go bad, but mm. you also don't really relish eating it. That's okay. Thanks. Mm. Now, if you're going to leave here, says the Reeve, I would recommend going by the back door. You'll have cover for about an alley's worth, and you should be able to emerge from there without being seen. Sure. I would appreciate it if none of you mentioned this particular building, and he looks directly at Clark, to any of your other associates who might be interested. Do you have a message for any associates that should be passing on? Arrangements will be made. They'll know what I mean. Oh, all right then. Well, it's been a pleasure. Clark will, Clark will get up to leave, like right. right now. Thanks for your assistance. Thank you, says, uh, says uh, the Reeve. You are um, proving to be rather useful around here. Maybe my initial assessment of you was wrong. Still, Try to keep out of trouble. And yeah, this time we didn't have anyone die and disintegrate in front of us. Good. The playwright was the last time I met. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the beholder almost got disintegrated, but now. Mm. <laughs> Aliel says, if you want to come see my sister now, we can go there. Or if you'd rather go somewhere else, let me know when you're going to be by. I Is she providing breakfast? Uh, the kitchen's pretty good, from what I recall. I don't mind going now. Yep. All right. Follow me. And you leave the Reeve, Jack, and Jacob behind. Head out through the back door. It is indeed very well built uh, to be giving quite a bit of cover. Uh, it's long and narrow, um, but there are no windows that open up onto this side from either of the buildings it's adjacent to. It looks as though the buildings were kind of positioned very carefully as well. You can also see a little bit of extra construction where they've tied the rooftops of a couple of these buildings together. You've noticed that before, that there are certain pathways you can get through. And this one seems to have been built that same way. Dingles. Um, I'm going to turn into a generic, like, whatever birds are around, like 
Okay, like a sparrow? Like, yeah, pigeon. Okay. It's pigeon. Like... You could be hated by everyone. Yeah. Mm, just something that wouldn't seem out of the ordinary. Okay. And just stick around, keep an eye on. Let's make sure to poop on random people to, to hold your cover. Yeah. You may find yourself out of that cover if anybody takes offense to that, but... Uh, yes, and you're making your way back with Alil? Yep. Okay. Um, again, Alil seems to instinctively know a path. Um, this time, from observing from overhead, it's a little bit different from what you expected it to be. It, it is not a memory that he's projecting. At least it doesn't seem like he's remembering it. But you do notice that he sort of instinctively takes turns, uh, Elzara, and you notice that that he doesn't seem to have to think about it. It's almost as though he's letting the guidance happen to him. And you make your way back to Alexia's house. He leads you around to the back gate, in this case. The footman uh, recognizes him. Uh, seems a little bit confused to see the rest of you, but doesn't say anything when Alil, assuming a, a, a sort of stance you haven't seen from him, for a moment, you would not see him as any different than any other noble in the city. He plays the part perfectly for a second or two, but you can see that it's a facade that he's not comfortable with, and as soon as you're inside, he drops it from a much more mon monotone, much more unexpressive form that he seems to have had most of the time with you or with him. Um, he leads you into the house, into the dining hall on the first floor, uh, and then disappears for a moment. My sister will be with you. I will go arrange things with the kitchen to make sure there's enough. So. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will be back and do my form. Okay. I just want to keep an eye on the skies. Okay. It Nobody seems to have been kitchen. unnoticed by anyone traveling. There are a lot of people out. It's early morning. Mm -hmm. um, people are setting up uh, market stalls and moving things about. It seems like it's going to be a sunny day from what you've seen so far. After a few minutes um, Alexia comes to the table this is Alexia as you haven't seen her before. This is Alexia first thing in the morning. Uh, there's a sense of urgency as she comes in. Um, now, Alexia may be genetically in, uh, incapable of not appearing to be somewhat beautiful, but there's not the polish, there's not the fancy clothes that she would normally be seen in. Instead, it's a simple night shift. Um, no jewelry, no makeup, but still with uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, enhancement, uh, a little bit in the morning. Either that or she just looks this way all the time. Um, make a religion roll. Ooh. That's not good. Seven. Seven? Okay. There's a thought that occurs to you, but it's fleeting and gone in a moment. It's good to see you all again. My brother told me what happened last night. I want to thank you for helping him with that. I'm not sure if I understand all the details, but... And she kind of moves over and has a seat. Breakfast will be served shortly. Clark will sit. We are always glad to assist. I'm probably glad for breakfast, I suspect. Well, why not? Also little bit. It beats library breakfast. Just don't tell them I said that. <laughs> if you'd like to, um, and you kind of see her pause, we also have ex excellent hot water here if you'd like to refresh yourselves a bit after breakfast. And you kind of realize... I'll just kind of like look at myself. Oh, yeah, I spent the night down below the sewers <laughs> and didn't have a chance to actually do anything about that. You don't notice anything different. Pass. My apologies. I'm fine. I've got magic for that. <laughs> I would have asked you. Mm -hmm. more of our pop. <laughs> Hair protection. There we go. <laughs> sadly, not sadly not protection. It's more repair. Yeah. yeah. And it can only go so far. You can get all the split ends. Can't can't style the hair. It can nope. only clean it. Um, but she sort of smiles. Of course, no offense. I didn't. Never mind. You guys stink. And she looks a little bit embarrassed and kind of... I didn't want to say anything. It's okay, they know. 
And Bats for everyone. Her brother comes back into the room and it looks as though they're about to say something, but then also a number of servants come behind them with, with plates of food. I have robes of self-cleaning. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't clean you. But like Actually, the robes of self-repair, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but stink is sort of like... Damaging. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for clump. Oh, it damages my image. <laughs> <laughs> Can't that be extended to? I think that's that's robes of PR. Uh, <laughs> that's a later project. Yeah, I'm writing that down. But she, they look like they're about to say something. But as the servants come in, they do go mum for a second. Um, after they've delivered the food, Ooh. she thanks them and uh, dismisses them, and actually gestures. And Elil goes over and closes the sliding door. I think the the servants as well as the dropping server. Thank you, thank you. It's about thank you. About four different uh, servers come in, and they have uh, fresh biscuits that were clearly made that morning, as well as uh, there's pork chops uh, and freshly boiled eggs, um, as well as juice and milk. Uh, all seems very fresh. Any it's coffee? actually probably the, hmm? any coffee. Uh, there is a carafe that's brought in as well. Cool. Uh, there's also a small bottle of wine that's brought in and you can see that Alexia actually takes a nip of wine uh, it is probably for her an average breakfast for the rest of you this is probably one of the more expensive breakfasts you've ever had uh, especially because all of it seems to be fresh this tastes way better than the food I make actually real food for one thing as well and the texture feels really good please eat as you like with uh I suppose it's a bit of a strange turn of phrase, but may you all have Marius's blessing on this morning. <laughs> Thank you. And you. Thank you, Clark. Whoops. Things are falling over. Yeah, there's a board. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. I have spare boards. <laughs> No, I know it's there, so I won't, like, bump it with my knee anymore. <laughs> my brother told me much of what happened last night, so I think I understand. This is something that disturbs me greatly, both in my own personal dealings with my brother and also as a council member. I'm going to try to bring this to the rest of the council. I understand the Reeve is involved, which means that Alistair will know everything very shortly, I'm sure. And you notice a bit of a grimace that very, very briefly crosses her face when she says that. I think that right now, considering the situation with the city, it would be best to keep this discreet. We don't want to be putting the operatives that we have in more danger than necessary, and we don't know who to trust. We don't mm -hmm. want to create a panic. No. So soon after the previous attacks. Still, I'd like to do as much as I can. Hmm. I can bring it up to a closed session of the council, but I have a feeling that that's a mistake. I have... I would suggest keeping it... talking to the Reeve before you make any decisions on who to contact and letting him have control over his current investigation. You, you wouldn't want to put jack through more danger than he already has been. Yes, I I was told by my brother some of what that entails. I must admit I'm somewhat surprised, but so be it. Nonetheless, I would like to first of all extend my thanks for what you've done and express my worry if this if this has happened to this city if there are indeed others running around with the, the wrong faces we have to deal with this we've been looking into this for a while now mm -hmm. yeah so now it's no longer just doppelgangers there's these intellect devourers that can take over somebody's body and oh, and the tentacle faced beings that ran away well the various tentacle beings that seem to be running this I'm not sure from. which of the ones were in charge, but I'm pretty sure that that one that got away, I, I believe that was the uh, the plane of elemental water. Um, or something with the feel of it uh, while I was down there. Yeah. Tell me, um, 
Do you trust Imro Imagir? We don't really have a choice at this point. He does certainly keep a lot of secrets. We've been finding out more recently as he's been sending us on investigations. I trust him to think he's doing the right thing. I don't know if he's... I don't know if the way he's approaching it is actually the best way to go. But I... I do not think he is a villain in this... I just think he's too secretive. We have been discussing for some time in the council about what to do about the great library. Oh? There is considerable opinion that it has for far too long maintained too independent an existence. It should be brought under the care of the council. Mm. With Imro's return, this has made it somewhat more precarious. And with these creatures and other things attempting to undermine the city, I am concerned. Do you, Do you have any reason I should be less concerned about Imro? and the library. No comment. <laughs> Are you suggesting that Imro has oh. something to do with the appearance of these creatures? Do you think that's the case? I don't think that's the case. I do... It seems terribly coincidental. It does. From what I've experienced in the library, as someone from the outside, um, and some, but as someone who has also ended up involved in all of this, while there are, I, I see the point of having access to information being important for everyone. I also know that there are a lot of dangerous things that shouldn't be available to everyone. Uh, but that are useful. What do you mean? Well, knowledge can be dangerous. It's useful to know what you're up against at times. Indeed. I see. And you think this the library contains this knowledge, but it's not being given? <laughs> it's no more of a... There's a lot of dangerous knowledge in there that is being protected that if it were to open up and be more available to people that might start causing issues so or just power power can corrupt but ignorance is also dangerous so it is a dilemma so the library contains knowledge which is dangerous and useful Possibly. I've and right now there is no one but Imro who can say who shall have what knowledge. Imro and his staff. Which includes you, does it not? I make none of the policies. I perform research and catalog. I think you're being a bit modest. Well, yes. I don't think that making the entire library more public is a good thing. But should it be brought to oversight? You're not looking to make the, the library public. You're make, looking to make it yours. I'm looking to make sure that this city is protected, and if that poses a threat from within, then it must be controlled. We will do to, everything in our power to help prevent threats to the library. To put it bluntly the library's greatest problem is that it cannot actually protect what it has and you won't be able to protect it any more than they do well they can we recovered the thing we recovered some stuff 
we were the only reason that they didn't get away with all they were trying to steal the last time they attacked. And they were trying to steal something. The wild hunt. The wild hunt. We're trying to steal this is information that were mentioned. This is information that was never released to us. Again, the well, secrecy continues. It, I look and say, exactly what I was telling you yesterday. There's too much secrecy. Hmm. At least amongst those who can do something, I do think it would be improper to just tell the public everything because it's likely to make them more scared than than protected. But... but you tell people things all the time in Ruin. <laughs> yes. When I feel they should know it or I just forget. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that the information has to be shared. But with the right people. Yes, I mean, the people who can do something about it. And I mean, the people who won't use it, that information to cause panic. Or chaos. Yeah. Or the annihilation of the entire world. I think that keeping knowledge like what happened with the Wild Hunt, I don't... No, this is player preventing something. Mm. What did they... Did they actually get away with something, they or the, did we got... They got that branch of the Tree of Life. Yeah, they got yeah, yeah, they got one thing, and we stopped them from getting the other one. Two. Two. I have our backs. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, that necessarily knowing that there was an attack, yes, is important. Knowing the details is important to the people dealing with the situation. And as you speak, you hear the monotone response from the far end of the table where you've not really been paying that much attention. And look over at Alil, who in front of him has constructed this strange balance with forks and knives and a dinner roll balanced on one side, a piece of butter balanced on the other, a pork chop speared through by a knife that seems to improbably lean over but somehow balanced by the fork on the other side. This world needs balance. And his voice seems to take on a deeper ethereal tone that resonates around the room. You have entered into the great game of balance, but you are already several steps behind. Who is ahead? What are we even up against? All knowledge is not available to me, but I seek the balance. And for a moment, or in that instant, you realize it is not a Leo Yeah, that's speaking. what I figured. <laughs> are you the Justicar? I have had many names. Is the Justicar one of them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, this world sits in a delicate balance that is uneven. What happens if it becomes completely uneven? Chaos. Destruction of the world, exactly what we're trying to prevent, okay? Your world will not suffer destruction. That would be order. It will be chaos if they are successful. Who are they? There is a congregation of four. I do not know them yet. My servant has not found them all yet. Have they found any of them? Yesterday, you touched their power. One of them. The elements. These are not elements as you understand. And you see his whole body kind of shift and move. And you realize he's actually standing up. But he's not really f seemingly moved from his seat somehow. And he touches the roll that's at the end. And you see it wither and die burning away into this sort of decay. Your simple mind knows some balance. You have notions of 
elements, but you do not truly understand them. You have chosen the wrong pillars to build your foundation on. Perhaps in time I can educate this world once it has achieved balance. It's a bit vague. When you say the pillars of our foundation, do you mean the city, the library? I think he means our culture. Possibly. Your gods. Yeah. Hmm. What's left of them? They once maintained a form of order, but allowed chaos to disrupt them, thus disrupting the world, opening the doors to the Congregation of Four. I know one of them by name. Which one of the four? Yes. Let, let me guess. Pichero. Yes? No? Nope. I know that name, but I do not know if they are far part of the four. Oh, it was many times. Which if one? If Pichero is involved, it would explain much. Pichero is a being of pain and love, of lust and destruction, of deceit and truth, in of itself, balanced, until coming to the mortal plane. But if Peturo is involved, it would explain much. Like, explain much of the current events? The failure of passions, the destruction of order in favor of the heart, you call it. Hmm. And you knew of one of these four by name. Which one? What name is that? The demon lord of the hearth and home of family and of jealousy and rage. His name to some on the mortal plane is Arvax. Yes, we've uh, had dealings with him before. We still have his eye. Ruining the moment. Alright, <laughs> 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 okay, just just because player is slow at writing. Mm -hmm. Her, uh, hearth, home, family, and what? Jealousy. Jealousy. Jealousy and rage. Jealousy, rage. Oh, well, that describes family. <laughs> We've encountered some of us called this before. You have seen merely the beginning. I can feel his ripping into your realm. It is tempting very tempting and for a moment there's a almost like a chill in the air as you realize this may or may not be exactly what you would call a benign being no, i don't think he's benign <laughs> no the one you touched yesterday i do not know its name when you say touched my servant He was able to undo some of what it had created. I do not know its name, but what? it is cold and reason. Was the realm of primal water its base? Tell me as much as you know about this second one, and I'll take out my book, <laughs> The Guide to Demons, my servant is not strong enough to maintain this connection for very long. Give me all the keywords you possibly can. I can potentially identify him. It. Hashtag demon search. <laughs> <laughs> it is the demon lord of the mind, and of reason, and of knowledge, 
and power. Is Patero a demon lord as well? Yes. So this would be an invasion by demons? Yes. Is the wild hunt demonic? I do not know what you mean by that name. My vision into your world is from the outside, and it is difficult. Hmm. There are only a few of my servants among you. I think the Wild Hunt's situation is a problem with balance within druid beliefs. Mm. And specifically a bit of a family feud. What do you... What do you have in mind for my brother? Says Alexia from the other end of the table. And looking back at her, you can see her somewhat white-knuckled grabbing the edge of the table. It's hard to tell if it's fear, anger, or a mix of both. Rage, perhaps. Or fright for her brother. Your brother is my servant. So long as he provides me with service and helps to restore the balance I crave. If he fails your service, does he die? Inevitably. He may die anyway. Mm. My service is not easy, but he chose it rather than die the first time. Mm. Uh, I would have done the same, to be honest. Wait, we did do the same, didn't we? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I can always use more servants. And the head kind of turns slowly and looks at you, assessingly. Well, if I happen to suffer a death that will be permanent, and you happen to show up and extend your hand, well, I probably won't say no. Death is not a requirement into my service. What are the terms and conditions? <laughs> I'd have to see those and read through them first. Clark will point to the brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's it. I'll, I'll think about it. But thank you for the offer. You are petty and unworthy. Mm. Well, we'll see about that. You if have can, touched I... destiny somehow. Mortals occasionally rise above their station to rival even the gods, as has already happened once in your realm. Emerald? I do not know his name. Elf, about this tall, here and under here. There are many such things in time. Your realm was broken once by these mortals. Mm. I seek balance. I hope that you will help my servant. Well, we will. If you seek balance and we seek to stop this demon invasion, we are yeah. definitely on the same side. Just sort of gently nudges the strange mobile that is built, starting to get them to spin and spin, and it wobbles in a strange sort of way, but yet still seems to maintain this balance. Balance is hard, but glorious, but must be maintained or, and now you see it start to wobble and he just touches one thing ever so lightly and the whole thing seems to collapse and clatter to the table. And Elil sits back down, shakes his head. Welcome back. That was incredible. It was. He's given us information. The Justicar, I mean. He has a lot of information. Sometimes too much. What does he mean by I'm petty? Like. Mm, I wonder. In order to serve an entity like that, 
you have to have faith and be focused on following the wills of oh. the being you follow. Right. Even Your focuses are pretty much on what you want to do. Uh, that and doesn't jive well with working and for, for the good of this realm. This mm. What you feel well, what you feel is the good of this realm. In order to follow him, you would have to subvert your desires to their desires. So I'm not obedient enough, is what he's saying. Effectively, yeah, you don't have faith in an entity that you follow. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm still going to wow him when I find out the name of that demon lord, though. <laughs> um, if you'll excuse me, and he kind of reaches forward, picks up some of the plates that have fallen that he had balanced and some of the food and actually just loads up a plate with food he, you would be uh, maybe not surprised to learn that that really drives up your appetite and he starts to eat quite quite a bit Alexia at the other end of the table is just looking at him with concern and worry and barely contained fury do we notice this? It's really easy to notice at this point. She was being a little bit more restrained before, but now she's just right on the edge of her, her seat, practically. So, uh, whatever the, the Justicar seems to be an ally. Currently. Life. May not always be. Yeah, but if... It has an extreme sense of balance. Ultimately, to be honest, ultimately it would be Kind of awful. Uh, to have complete balance. I've only had a glimpse of what he meant. This is Elil speaking. I've only had a glimpse of what he means by that. And I, I actually hope I don't exist if it ever comes to pass. Uh, the, in the ultimate, in the extreme, balance is the end of everything. The utter unchanging nature of the universe. Complete destruction, yes. Not destruction. It would be as if nothing ever changed. No time. Mm. Nothing would ever change. Everything would be perfectly in balance. It, it, it's beautiful. But it, it's That's hard... boring. It's hard to understand as just a mortal being. We're used to everything changing, or we're used to the end of life. There would be no end of life. No one would die. Or move... I'd be out of work. Think. <laughs> you would be a statue. I'd be out of work. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, we are so far out of balance. This much I can see in everything. Uh, from the way that this meal is and the way that other meals are, uh, the way that people don't always get properly paid for what they do, uh, people who die and they shouldn't, people who... Uh, there's a lot. And that's, that's why I agreed to help him. Mm -hmm. But there's more. We see everything on our own scale. And it seems pretty obvious there's a lot of things that are out of balance. But the Jessicar sees things on a different scale entirely. On a celestial scale, things are out of balance. The four of you, in a way, represent one of the balances. Mm -hmm. You are all different. Very different. <laughs> yes. Uh, but you're coming together to fight this chaos. And that is, I think, one of the reasons that I can trust you. But there is other things that you have done. Things that I don't entirely understand, but the Justicar has shown me the work that you're doing, Amrun Elisar. You have breached a barrier that was closed. Not alone, but there returns one of the primordial gods. Oh, that barrier. I think I normally don't do well. Okay, I actually do do break and enter, but anyways, that's the point. I think that's more of Clark's specialty. I mostly just hurt people. 
Well, I used to break open doors. I used to have this ability to go bloom. And it was pretty neat. It was spectacular, yes. I don't know anything about that, but... Um, I don't know how to say it, but I can see sometimes the weave of the world, the, the interactions of fate, hmm. and I see yours with what you're building. But Fine. you must hurry. I'm internet famous. Um, yes. There's a lot of work to be done. And the breakfast kind of gets a little quiet as everybody sort of thinks to themselves or Clark eats. Um, everybody else seems to be kind of tense. Breakfast is really good. Mm. There's this really the applesauce that, that they've mm. made to go with the uh, with the pork chops. Mm. It tastes immense. Like it's, it's put got it this, on other stuff. Yeah, it's it, you practically just spread it on your finger at this mm. point. No, um, no, 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 no. Um, I will at some point look at um, Alexia. Mm -hmm. say, I understand your desire to control the library. I think, in a certain way, the library is a failure and a mistake. What? In other ways, it is a success. I don't believe the way that Emerald is doing things is necessarily right. It's, it's too secretive to those who could use that information to do good. But... If the council tries to take over the library, it will be war between the two of you, and no good will come of it. I don't want to set the library at odds with the city, but if it's already acting that way, we have to do something. Well, I don't think it's acting that way. I mean, we've collaborated well so far. Well, uh, what you have to do is connect with the library. Do your best to convince Emerald or the others. Emerald may not be there for long. He is not in good shape. But he's not. No. I didn't know he that. He seems to be doing worse each time we see him, and he's been staying at the Temple of Namazani. They are very good at at helping people and what they do, oh, but it's so boring. Well, I don't know about that. Their maze was really neat. But if he's... He does not seem to be recovering. And if they can't help him, I'm not sure who else could. He is extraordinarily old even for what he is. And I think time is eventually catching up with him. So if not him, then who? Who is the second in command of your library? There is none. There's the uh, Meisters. No, no, there is. There is. <laughs> Isn't it like the then there's like all the Meisters? Yeah, the the Meisters. second in command. Mm. Morgan. That's the only name I have. In charge of operations. Okay. The, <laughs> the general manager, effectively. Yeah, yeah in, in Imrel's absence, yes, the departments did work independently, but thinking on it, while Morgan never took control, just about everybody did actually uh, defer um, to their, their requests. Okay. Now, Morgan may not be the person that takes over. Uh, Morgan may simply be there to keep the place running a position that needs rank but the person actually running the library needs vision which may end up being Miley or one of the others although I doubt it would be um, Frank or Cabardon no, no. um, as I doubt she would want to do that work it would take away from her research but 
I mean, I wouldn't say start contacting people underneath him right now. He would likely look at that rightfully as an attempt to circumvent him. But I think you need to start talking with them and sharing information. It's notoriously difficult to get any sort of arranged meeting with Emerald Amakir. I know, right? Yeah. From that, I mean, you know bureaucracy better than I do, but perhaps meet with this Morgan or with Miley or one of the others to talk about trying to get a meeting with Emerald. Could you arrange such a meeting? If I can see him again, possibly. But even with these others, I, I'm not familiar with Morgan or Miley or the any of the others. I can certainly ask if you can meet with them. Or could you not just show up? Like the time when you got me out of the library after curfew. That took a bit of arm twisting. It, yes. And that may... It was pretty amazing, though. That may make the library defensive. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I think part of it is that you can't necessarily just ask them to give you the in the information and access to the information without giving them anything in return. Exactly. They're fairly self-sufficient. There has to be a sharing. They will not give you information if you do not give it in return. But there is information you have and resources you have that perhaps could lead to the two of you working together. So what do they need? That, that would be something to talk to the them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know what they mean. But it's mean, just something to keep in mind. Yeah. I mean, Possibly your brother here has given us information that we did not have from our resources at the library. So uh, the library has a lot of information and a lot of powerful artifacts, but they do not have everything. Certainly there would be ways that as the council that runs the city and ha possibly has connections to other places, uh, there would be things you can do that they cannot. If the two of you work together, even if it is just a little bit at first, uh, perhaps eventually the two of you can work together and aid each other greatly in what I suspect to be some very difficult times ahead. Uh, if we only know of two of the the four enemies we face, and apparently that enemy is completely different from the Wild Hunt, uh, which is also trying to do its thing. Um, like I said, I feel like that's a bit more of a druid family feud. It may, uh, it may be that because the Wild Hunt is of this world, it's not in with these others that are all demonic and from other realms. Um, what he said does fit in with what we had learned earlier that Arvax and uh, Paturo were trying to come in to fill some of the space caused by Polexia's downfall a thousand years ago when Polexia's servants fought amongst each other and uh, Ignis's servants fought against Polexia's um, that it seems to me maybe when the great imbalance happened um, but I think that is the important thing if you simply try to control the library you're going to be at odds with them and it will be much more difficult for you to help anything because you will constantly be just fighting with them while Paturo and Arvax and the others are doing things in the shadows. Also, you may wish to have a group that specializes in doing things in the shadows as well to fight them back. <clears throat> so, collaborate, not control. Um, that is some of what we have been doing, is fighting these things when we encounter them and trying to boost the defenses of areas that we can, uh, primarily working for the library, but... Um, but we have received aid from the library and the city, so clearly it can work. Perhaps then it will be you that 
bear the agents of our change. I will see what I can do with the council. I have my own concerns with the library, but I am not alone in these concerns, and mine are, well, we're more patient. There is talk already of annexing the library, and I have, I have convinced them that something else would be necessary, but there's concern that it is too dangerous. It would be. No, that the library is too dangerous. I think annexing it would be dangerous too, but there's concern that if we wait too long, if we let the wound get too great, that we will not be able to heal the city. But these are concerns for council meetings, and I will do what I can to bring some peace to this. Or at least stall the annexing for us for a little while longer. If you could work within as well. Oh, I will. I would appreciate that. I have a meeting with the council tomorrow about church matters. And she looks for a moment. Oh, yes. You're looking to take over one of the old buildings. Yes. Manor House, I think. Uh, some sort of building large enough to do the job. But that uh, there's a lot to do there. And I believe perhaps with my reputation in the city, perhaps I could be, uh, perhaps that work could be a way of delaying the actions of the, uh, the hasty actions of the others by giving them something else to work on to give perhaps more time to make friendly inroads with the library. This city isn't known for its temples. And she kind of smiles a bit. Um, and that is one of the things that I believe perhaps should change. Maybe. It's important for people to be able to have a place that they feel connection to. And a place that where they feel safe. Or that they can look to in hard times. <laughs> As Elzara takes off on her motorbike. <laughs> no, that's, uh, uh, transforms that, into a motorbike and then no, takes that's, off. That's uh, Ferandra. Uh, 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 the, uh, the druid lady. Ferandra. Uh, yeah, yeah Ferandra. Uh, riding the uh, hippogriff the, uh, around. The, uh, the uh, base growling... Uh, ostrich bike um, but uh, for the same reason that we cannot tell the public everything that is going on for it may cause a riot there are things that can be presented to the public as ways of keeping them calmer making them feel safer um, I suspect Alistair's idea was not exactly the most efficient although it was sufficient for a while. What was his idea? He oh. brought in a lot of mercenaries. Uh, the extra yeah. guards helped to some degree, although I think perhaps once they reached a certain mass of them, it may have I voted gone against the other it. way. I'm somewhat regretting that now. I didn't expect... Well, no one could have expected it. None of us did. I would have... Mercenaries need a war. If you don't give them one, they'll make one. Oh, no, I, I voted against the mercenaries in the first place. But, thankfully, they were here. He knew. I don't know how he knew, but he knew. Ah, oh, that I would have been granted a vision of this. Why not? And she does kind of turn towards the sky and pleadingly ask, And what of your visions? Have you had another? No, well, I, I don't exactly have the means to go to Marius' blessing on a regular basis, but there would hasn't you, been... Would you like to? Sure. When? Tonight. That'll be great. Certainly, I, I will get myself washed in, don't worry. He's free. Ah, he'll be ready to go. Date night. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll if there's a mariachi band, I'm like punching somebody. <laughs> and, and I. 
to this day, I still, I'm, I'm still sure, like, Sykes doesn't know it was you guys that would, <laughs> that were causing the issue. No, it was totally, totally your parents. We had nothing to do with it. I have a really crappy painting of the event. <laughs> <laughs> that stays in the bag of holding. Uh, with that, the mood does lighten somewhat, as uh, she actually smiles when, when saying that you know, we oh, should do this tonight. Um, I have council business to attend to. We have some meetings today. I look forward to your proposal and presentation tomorrow. I do yeah, have yeah. one question. I know that uh, Ferendra has been talking to you about the old grove. She's mentioned mm. it, yes. It would be important for that matter to be settled fairly quickly, as we may have a holy tree to plant very soon. Well then, I'll tell you what I can do. I will add it onto tomorrow's docket, uh, immediately preceding Amrun's own presentation. Come, present your case, and I will, from my side of the bench, help you. Thank you. And I will do my best to arrange a meeting between yourself and Morgan at the library. Good. Now, if you'll excuse me, council business has a lot of paperwork to go through. And I think that boring paperwork is exactly what I'd like to do right now. Understandable. I myself have some research to do, and some personal grooming. <laughs> I can send my carriage to take you wherever you need to go, if that helps. I'll She's look at them. still looking directly at you, but <laughs> it does seem like the the messages for everyone. Certainly, if it's not too much trouble. Uh, I would like to speak with Verendra and get a presentation set up. Of course, because of course. Uh, I know that she left already taking the griffin for a morning ride. Uh, I know her. Well, they're both flying. I'm not sure how that works. I know her training schedule. Of course. Um, I'll just head back to the inn uh, to get ready. Thank you very much. And thank you once again, says Alil, for your assistance. And thank you we for yours. We will be speaking again, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I have some places to go see. I can sense the imbalance still. If it's in the sewers, just do be careful. Of course. And with that, both of them leave for the breakfast. They leave the remainder of the food there, although servants are kind of just outside the door. You can see kind of like ready to clear mm -hmm. off. And <laughs> no, one, no one stops you, and there's plentiful food yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Bag of praise. I will say thanks for the breakfast. Obviously. Probably yeah. could have Actually. fed about a dozen people easily. Um, Actually, uh, stuff like the pork chops and stuff that's more solid, uh, yeah. He will put in the bag of preservation. Uh, he's going to go feed the boar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'll grab a little bit for myself as well for the next couple of days, um, <laughs> basically. Um, but just saying that roll was a roll for a stealth that was a, a 22. So, okay. Uh, I cast, just because I was curious, I cast just the flavor enhancement. Oh, on this food? Okay. Um, you've heard Zacchaeus talk about the food at Marius's blessing when he was there. Now you kind of get it. Yeah. Not only do you have a good <laughs> chef to begin with, but then that extra that extra ability. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, imagine pork chops that taste like bacon, but it's just large amounts of juicy bacon. Nice. <laughs> or known as the bacon that I buy, because I buy bacon of that size. With Where that, uh, with that, and there are five hmm? gold on the table under his plate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Nobody seems to mention it uh, if they're if they do when they're clearing things away. But you probably made a servant's day, or week, or month. <laughs> As you break and go your own ways for a moment, I think we'll have a small break of our own. So we'll be back in a few minutes to continue the latter part of the session. And we return, both with our own bellies full and with our characters' bellies full. Oh, no, no. Uh, before we go too far, uh, I think you guys have some things you'd like to show off. Maybe? Oh, yeah. Uh, a while back, I think when we started the Watchers of the Drowned Isle Facebook group, which, if you want to keep t tabs on what we're doing, by all means, join into the conversation. Um, I posted this cute, where's the camera? This cute little chibi. 
Um, and uh, pictures of it are on the Facebook page. Uh, they're done by Mostly Pixel Art, uh, who its link will be in the bottom of this video, and I will send it to you. Okay. Uh, uh, they are awesome. They were at MBCon uh, last year, and this year they were there again, and other people got some stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I had uh, ones for uh, Zakis and Clark also made. Thank you, Pat. Then, but you didn't get welcome. one from Rune. Thanks, Pat. I forgot about it. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, due to the resolution, they're coming out as blank white cards. Yeah, so we can yeah, insert anything we want yeah, in that true. place. Yeah. A little bit of editing, and I can make it look like it's a fancy dancing thing. Yep. Um, yeah. But we will we will be posting those in the uh, Facebook group and on the Facebook page. Um, so, but we just wanted to give Lauren a shout out because she does really really adorable mm. work, and I have one for um, Elzara's twin brother as well, and some other characters that I have because it's adorable and I yep. love it. And I will mm. add scans of this and also the photograph you guys had done. I'll put those in the pause screen so cool. yeah. we get a chance to see them there uh, as well. The, the pictures are on the watchers group already so Perfect. you can get the entire photo shoot. Perfect. Not just that one. Now I'll have to leave oh, longer right. and longer segments of the pause screen in so that people can actually see all that. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. If you want to see them all please stay tuned. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! I have editing to do. All right. <clears throat> but yes, awesome work and very cool. Is she, is she coming cool. to Helcon? Yes, I cool. think so. Maybe we can get you in a ruin. <laughs> I think she said she was. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about uh, 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 Halcon, which is coming up in two weeks as we record, uh, and we're going to be not having an episode that week actually because. Most of us are going to be at Halcon. Yeah, Pat. All of us would love to be there, but <laughs> sometimes yeah, it happens. Things happen. Yeah. And that's how this game got started anyway. That's yeah. true. Blame it on Halcon. <laughs> Thank you, Halcon, for making me do so much work. Um, <laughs> Maybe they can sponsor us next year. <laughs> Probably not. As long as they don't blame us, then I'm happy, I think, at this point. As we resume, people have gone off in different directions, having had that full breakfast and full of ideas and thoughts and disturbances as well. I'm going to fast forward a little bit, unless there's something specifically. You wanted to talk to Friend Dragon, yeah. so it was that. So we'll have that conversation. Is there anything else anybody wants to do before we go back to... We'll come back to the council meeting, basically, for sure. council presentations. We'll go point. shower and clean up. Um, we, can, we can assume you know, normal maintenance has happened. I mean, I, I want to see the dinner, because those are always fun. Well, what will happen with that is, even with Alexia's poll, there is no space free at Marius's Blessing that evening. Uh, in fact, not for a week is there an opening. Um, and she seems somewhat unimpressed by that, but well, nonetheless, okay. that will happen. Okay. But we do have something planned for like a week later? Yes. Yeah. There's still a date set. So to speak. More time to plot. So to speak. <laughs> uh, and I gotta make a note in my own. <clears throat> so that would be the. <coughs> we're the 16th right now. So that would be the 23rd? Yeah. Of Axum? Yep. Yeah. Alright. I should probably post the whole calendar up so people on the Watchers group can actually see what crazy, stupid detail I go to. Um. I mean, but that'll give them information oh, that's that true. they don't pay attention to. Uh, that's true. <laughs> There's a reason I have the calendar. <laughs> so the calendar. you go to find Ferendra. Yes, I do. Plot a little bit. Now, uh, do you want to just narrate that scene, or do you have something in mind you want her to respond to? Mm, not much. I just want to check in with her about like what information she's talked about with uh, Alexia and like the state of the seed and just touch base, ask if she can come with me because she does know a lot more about the situation than I do. I just got us the meeting. The official meeting. Um, okay. She does kind of want to know everything that's happened, but also not want to know everything that's happened, based on the evening you had prior with, uh, with Aleel. Yeah. Uh, how much do you tell her of what all happened there? I tell her that it is fine. 
it's fine. We're all fine. It's all fine. It's here. all fine. How are you? Um, and that it's better that she doesn't know a lot of it for her safety and for the safety of those involved. Make a persuasion roll on that point. Not 20. <laughs> all right. Despite her obvious curiosity, she relents uh, and then also says that, but someday you're going to tell me, right? Sure. Okay. She is excited that the meeting is set for the seed. Uh, mm -hmm. It had been something she had been talking to Alexia a little bit about before. Yeah. Um, so it's not entirely a surprise. Uh, but the, the speed is because Alexia had said that, yes, we would like to do this. It's going to take a few weeks to get it before the council. The fact that it's going to happen in a couple of days is surprising. In less than 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah quite surprising. Uh, I, I do say that I would like her there because she knows a lot more about the situation than I do. I've just kind of been there. So it's her project, not mine. Um, she kind of goes pale. Uh, no. I don't like talking in front of groups. Neither do I. <laughs> but you're so much better at it than I am. Not really. <laughs> but I don't really... But you're the one with the information. The last time I tried to speak in front of a group, I turned into a mouse. I wasn't trying to. I got away pretty quickly. But that probably didn't help the meeting. Uh, I mean, I turn into a kitten when I get stressed, so... Mood. So we would chase each other around. That probably wouldn't help. No. But your... Amkisra... Your... Her daughter. How could you not... I'm good with animals, not people. My yeah. brother's the one who's good with people. Can he come and do it? Not really. Um, you, she kind of insists that at least you have to be there. Yes. She will try. I, I definitely will be there. But she's very She just nervous. has more of the information than I do. So I, I'm like, let's, we're both bad at this. Let's tag team this and try to make it better. Okay. <laughs> um... And she shows you the seed. She has still the seed kept yeah. very well. Um, it's actually kind of kept in a, in a dry spot with some straw mm -hmm. right now to prevent it from going any further. Mm -hmm. As you recall, it had started to sprout a bit. Yes. Um, but keeping it dry has, has kept it preserved. It does need to go in the ground very soon. Though. Yes. Um, um, also, another thing of note. Have I heard back from my mother yet? No. You okay. have not. Surprisingly. It's starting to worry you a little bit. I mean, it's not like you hear from your mother that often anyway. But, like, she's been, like, extremely elusive, and I know how to get a hold of her, but, like, she's not listening to me. <laughs> it's a little bit disturbing, yeah. Yeah. Especially with the wild hunt running around. And me not getting any information. Yeah. But, no, you've not heard a thing from your mother just yet. Yeah. Um... Where I do have the meeting coming, I will ask um, either Emron or Zakis. Probably Emron because he knows her better. Um, to message my mother and say that we have a meeting to plant the seed. I need information. Please. Break me out. We, we need communication. Are you going to ask her uh, for specific information or just tell her you need information? On how to proceed with this situation. Yes. Okay. That, that, that is... I can do that. <laughs> um, okay. I, I'll... When, uh, when you ask me, I'll do it right then. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, like, I've sent her an animal messenger already. Haven't gotten a response. Yeah. It's been a week. <laughs> um... M. Kisra. What's her full name? Amakir. Amakir. Yeah. Um, uh, Your dad's an Amakir. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. How irreverent do I want to be in this? Um, hello, Mrs. Moonshadow. I have a message from. Uh, your daughter. Uh, she's asking. Uh, she, has, she has the seed. 
the holy seed of the druids and needs to know what needs information on what she can uh, what to do with it has a meeting about it tomorrow <laughs> yeah there's a there's a meeting here in Vitor tomorrow about it she could really use your help if you don't offer any help I'm going to get to plant it where I want to <laughs> 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 And you know what that's going to do. Um, uh, so Tata, the elegant pony. The, uh, uh, the, uh, was it? The only, uh, the only living servant of Pelexia. That was way more than 25 <laughs> words. Yeah, I can send a couple of times. Uh, and then it's Amarin, just in case you didn't. Uh, <laughs> a third one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and okay. he'll send that off and uh, see if he gets a response for her. Oh, um, three. <laughs> there's no response to the first message, partially because it probably gets cut off as you get kind of wordy there. Uh, the second message starts to get a response as you lead into the third message. Uh, and the response from the second message is... I am, aware, I am aware of my daughter's requests and I know of the urgency of the situation. And it cuts off because then the third message comes in. So she stops answering that one to answer the third one. Under no circumstances are you to plant the seed yourself. I am sending someone to help. <laughs> you got a response. She's Good. sending someone to help. Good. <laughs> Um, and indeed, later on that day, you see four people arrive who are all familiar to you. <laughs> Where's Emran? We must stop him. <laughs> Two of them are very tall. They are the uh, barbarian twins, Parda and Taro. Uh, sorry, they're not twins. They're, they're brothers. Uh, along with the young Gosh. druid... Kosh Narun. Uh, but they are there clearly to accompany the other person that has been sent. Old Fen. Mm. There's Old Fen, known as the, well, to some, just as a simple chestnut seller, uh, but a, a very aged, uh, uh, I grandmotherly like type. Uh, she's very delighted to see you. Uh, does kind of caution you to be somewhat uh, careful because her old bones aren't aren't getting any younger. Um, but yes, indeed, your mother has sent. Old For the Fen. audience, Old Fen is the the druid who got El Zero, who actually like pushed El Zero to actually like start actually working in druid stuff. <laughs> Um, not seen for a little while. I think seen at... Uh, she was here for... Um, Festin. For Festin. Yeah. Um, as well, uh, as part of that contingency. But yes, uh, she's very happy to see you once again. And uh, you, your mother said somewhat urgently that you have a seed to plant. Yes. We have a meeting about it tomorrow with the council. Um, oh, oh my. Well, I'm not sure I know anything about council meetings, but I know a lot about seeds. Yes. Your information would be possibly useful. I'm apprenticing with her, says Kosh. I didn't really know as much about seeds as I thought I did. He still doesn't know enough. Um, she says, good heart and kind heartedly. The two brothers are, are just kind of there. walking through town. They, they never really said all that much. Um, uh, Taro does look turn to you. Are you all right? The wild hunt doesn't come back for you, has it? As you recall, the last time you saw the two of them was when you were attacked by the Queen of the Wild Hunt back in Pabwich Glens. Uh, they've been back. We're fine, though. Well, bring her again. I'm ready to test my axe again. And Something magical would be more useful. Your other brother hits him on the shoulder. I told you. Shut up. I mean, magical weapons are good. I like them, says Pardo. 
I don't like relying upon anybody else's stuff. You bought the axe from somebody, didn't you? Shut up. As the two of them proceed to go that way and kind of conjoling each other, Kasha sort of shrugs. Um, now, if you'll take me to see the seed, I'd love to take a look and see what condition it's in. I will bring her and in introduce everybody. Uh, Ferendra is floored. Because uh, while you had known and probably mentioned to her that your mother finally had acknowledged it and was sending someone, she didn't expect old Fen either. Uh, and kind of like a grandmother, uh, that's the way that really old Fen greets just about everybody. Uh, but it is a, a moment uh, that's shared. And f you actually get this this reaction from Verendra, which is a little bit confusing at first. It's sort of an embarrassed look. And you see her as old Fen is moving around, examining the sea, just kind of going and just straightening things and <laughs> cleaning up the, the little bit of the straw that's here and just kind of going around and adjusting things. Um, but old Fen doesn't seem to notice. I'm not really sure if she did or not. But with her help, you'll have a decent idea of what to do. You haven't had a chance to see the site yet, yeah. uh, other than the brief look that you and Ferendra had taken before. I think you went through his animals, yeah. looking through. Uh, and it was just an overgrown patch where uh, basically a failed estate, uh, someone had been, the place had been boarded up, the building was falling apart. Uh, but it had been the original site of a, of a small druid grove in the city. Yeah. Uh, I would go and take a look at it, another look, just to get an idea. Okay. Um, but, yeah, nothing much, just... Yeah, and it, make a nature roll. 24. Okay. Um, one of the things that Old Fen mentions to you is to make sure that it is in good soil. And she kind of teaches a few things to you about what to look out for. Um, and says that the badger is one of the best ways to actually examine the soil. Uh, and gets you to dig a couple of tunnels underneath the soil, kind of smelling. And with her instruction, the smell of the soil suddenly takes on character that you'd never really noticed before. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're able to easily identify the, the soil is in pretty good shape. There's actually a lot of things growing on top of the land. Yeah. Um, the decay of the house, that's that's pretty bad. And the house will have to be destroyed or taken down, essentially. Uh, and part of what I'm now envisioning is... I'm probably not going to do this, although I... Ah, no, I'm not going to do this. I have been watching a lot of episodes of Zombie House Flippers, <laughs> and so there's a temptation in me. But no, it's just a house. For now. Uh, so that'll take up your couple of days until that. What are the rest of you doing? Anything in particular? I'm going to try to arrange a meeting between uh, Morgan and Alexia. Okay. And I'm, I also want to research on this demon that... Just like I was talking about. Like, I don't know if I'll have time, if I'll have time to do both. Um, make a persuasion roll. I'm assuming you're starting with that. The meeting? Yes. Yeah. There's a six, which is probably... Yeah, that's all of six. Okay. Um, you have a hard time getting in touch with Morgan. Um, in fact, it... It, uh, when you finally do get in touch with her, she's actually telling you more things than you're getting a chance to tell her. And it feels difficult to kind of bring up this request on behalf of Alexia for, your, for yourself, and then you're kind of feeling a bit of awkwardness as she starts talking about how the library has to take care of itself, and they're working on new security plans, and the building of the new tower, that's uh, one of their highest priorities right now. The tower which is going to contain the embellic, which is going to be used for the protection of and she specifically says, the protection of the great library. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of start to realize, uh, she's really focused on not anything outside the library. If anything, they're building heavier walls and distancing, them, distancing themselves even further. She starts talking to you about other plans they have for potentially introducing additional, or re repurposing some of the, uh, the catacombs that are below and adding more root cellar space so they can they can literally, if they needed to, shut off access to the rest of the city and literally live alone on their own. So turning the library into a bunker with kind of Kind of. And yeah. uh, so you find it difficult to bring up, like, uh, I'd kind of like to have a, s a discussion with you and the city about working closer together. So I'm, Am I even mentioning that? I was just going to say that 
Or what? Well, arrange a meeting between Alexia and Morgan. <laughs> yeah. So you find it difficult, and uh, it takes you basically a couple of different attempts because she's also really busy. Yeah. So while she gives you that flood of information, thinking that you are one of the people interested in that information, and not realizing that <laughs> that you actually came to her with a purpose, uh, you end up leaving uh, meetings with her a couple of times, sort of like. I was going to mention the thing with Alexia, and it doesn't happen until the second day. Okay. So we're going to say that does take up your couple of days. You have your normal amount of reading as, and research as well, mm -hmm. um, but then you have to kind of, every time you run into her, you have to kind of rethink, well, how am I going to say this uh, to her? Yeah. Uh, Clark. Uh, just a couple of very small things. Uh, first is to go talk to Bazo okay. and relay the message that the Reeve says things will be taken care of. Okay. And see if he reacts. Uh, you find Bazo at one of his usual locations. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, again, you have to kind of wait for him to, for the audience to die down. There's a process. His typical, his typical uh, uh, process of what to most people they would think that's his day job mm. uh, or that is his job. He is literally the sage. He knows a hell of a lot about everything mm -hmm. um, and gets paid a few coin here and there to make an appearance. Right. Um, after that clears off, um, he comes down to sit with you, and you, uh, I'm assuming, lead use, in. Use can't as well, just right. so we're not listening right. on. Um, and the, the, the response you get back from him is uh, kind of an amused smile. It's like, the Reeve has a very interesting way of thinking about the city. And thinking I don't already know. But we have arrangements in place. I don't remember why this was. I don't think this is Bazo's voice at all. It was something like uh, that. I think it was a little more, a little more uh, uh, higher pitched and uh, a little more like this. Yes, yes that's Bazo. <laughs> you have been talking a lot today. I'm I have sure been talking all kinds of crazy voices coming out of my mouth. So um, the 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 Reeve has a, a curious understanding with what we do and what he does. Do you mention? Um, the additional information that Alil said. Uh, sorry, that the no, it was Jack. it was Jack actually. About the yes, old library. about his understanding of the old library, about an additional group running around, and it, and he called it a thieves guild. Yeah, uh, just to say that there's another player that's unknown, and that may have something to do with uh, uh, influencing uh, people uh, in places of power. Now, this is a bit interesting to me. This relates somehow to Peter Cantor, doesn't it? Yeah, I would think so. I hadn't been able to put a lot of the things together there. Not just shapeshifters, though. Other, other, other things. Other things? Yeah, wizards could tell you more about it. I don't know. Well, knowledge is extraordinarily powerful in my business. The so sure. more you could let me know about that, the better. Uh, I'm sure we can arrange an audience at a different time. Hmm. Indeed. I have another request. Uh, oh. I would like to get uh, in front of a cleric of Marius, the real deal, independent, outside of uh, our business. Is that so? Yeah. Difficult. Clerics following the trickster god tend to be a little bit tricky to actually undercover. Well, undercover. The, the priests are easy to find, but I'm looking for the real deal. Oh. Well, that's an unusual request. Do you mind me asking exactly what you're looking for? I've had a crisis of faith, we'll say. A crisis of faith? Oh, my. You have had an interesting few days, haven't you? Adventuring is not what I thought it would be. <laughs> well, the world is complicated. Still, I'll ask around. Thank you. There aren't that many to be found. And most of the ones that I suspect will need a little encouragement. You find out what they need, I'll see if I can get it to them. Ah, well. I'll make sure that there's a little bit in there for you, too. Well, but of course. Services cost money, after all, or some other currency. Yes. Well, then. You... You made an impression on a number of people. I think this won't be as difficult as it would have been for others to arrange. 
but it'll take me a little while. Sure. Hmm. Clark will take his ring off and push it across the table. What do we hear? This thing helps you uh, avoid uh, danger, I think. Well, well, well. It's on your list, I believe. He uh, sets his drink down and then picks his drink up, and you don't see the ring there anymore. Right. You've done pretty well. Yes, I think I have a home for this. Mm. I also have a home for some coin, I think, yes? Yeah, that would be good. If that's what you wish, it will be done. Thank you. I'll have the coin tomorrow. Certainly. I'll be back tomorrow. All right. Need anything from the market? Oh, no. I'm good. Okay. Clark will get up without too much fanfare and leave. Okay. Um, I, I'm ruined. Anything in the meantime? Uh, or just preparing for the meeting? Yes, actually. Um, I have some stuff to look at. Uh, I'm just going to be doing detect magic. Okay. But uh, one, there was the blue crystal that we just picked up at the the place down below. The other ones, which I've forgotten about until now, are the half a dozen chaotic crystals that we got from the tower on the island. Oh my, okay. So, again, he's just doing the standard detect magic, uh, what kind of magic they're glowing with sort of thing. Okay. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, preparations, getting his people ready, and because he wants to have the ones who are officially inducted into the church... Uh, who have the uniforms, he wants them with him, like, in the seats, if it's open to the public. Okay. Uh, at the very least. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is actually illusion energy, or illusion magic emanating from the blue crystal. Okay. Uh, and enchantment magic coming from the uh, the crystals from the tower. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think other than that, it's just a matter of basically he'd spend time talking it over with his people uh, that are there, saying what he's hoping to do, what he wants to do with the meeting and such. And there might actually it probably doesn't happen yet, but there was uh, there was going to be an upcoming meeting with um, Yazana Fahana uh, where she was going to talk about what it's what it's like being a cleric for her. So that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, you find, um, as you return back to the inn and you start to collect some of the people yeah. together... And I also tell them what happened recently because I don't keep secrets from them. Okay. Um, there's a, a sort of mixed reaction uh, from, <coughs> from them on what you've been experiencing. Um, there is... Um, Towards the back of the room, um, perhaps you hadn't noticed her when you first came in. Uh, you do see Catherine sitting there. Oh, yay. Um, and make an inside check. Which one's Catherine again? Is that one which? Yep. Uh, no, no, it's the, the hag. Uh, yeah. No, no, it's just yeah. Catherine. Or Frost. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It's Catherine. So it's I make an insight? Yep. 12. 12? Um, it's probably just... Uh, a trick of the light but you do see about a half a dozen of them so the majority of them uh, kind of keep looking over the shoulder at her almost as an assurance mm. as you talk um, when you lay out the plan for the following or for the, the meeting um, she kind of pipes in at that point you heard him. We have to make sure we're in order and make sure everyone is looking perfect for this. Now, I know a little bit about fashion and style, Amrun. I, I don't want to question what you've decided to do, but I thought I had a few pointers that I could help them out with. Ways to make their new garments uh, fit a little more firmly. Okay, what are those points? And she starts to detail a few things, mostly uh, about uh, how to tighten the undergarment and, and loosen the overgarment which also allows for them to be carrying things that no one notices. Sure, I get no problem with that. Okay. Um, and they kind of seem to, as you're, as she's explaining, uh, one of them kind of is standing there, and she's 
basically waiting for uh, Catherine to explain, completely uh, uh, ready to go along with whatever she's talking about. Um, I will make sure that I am in charge of the conversation, though, because I am very wary of Catherine. Um, okay. Make an, uh, make a persuasion check. Uh, before I do that, uh, actually, before I start talking with them, I am going to cast uh, Enhance Self to uh, give me advantage on my charisma rolls. Okay. Partly this is in preparation because I'm going to cast it before the meeting the next day, too. Uh, to give myself the best possible chances. Um, so, yeah, you get... Make your perception check. Uh, okay, just I just want to total the roll first so I don't forget it. Uh, I had a 21 on the persuasion. Okay. Uh, perception roll? No, I got okay. like a 10. All right. Um, you feel quite confident that they're paying attention to everything you're saying. Um... And while they're definitely following your lead, uh, she has managed to help them considerably in, in uh, keeping in form. Sure. Um, so you feel like it wasn't a total victory, but it was it yeah. was uh, successful. Well, that's fine. All right. I'll do what I can until eventually I can get rid of her. <laughs> or turn it to my side. I'm easy that way. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got, basically. It's just... Okay. Uh, basically, and just, I'd like them to be there tomorrow just as support, but uh, not to say or do anything themselves, but just to show that there are already several people joining and that sort of thing. Okay. And, yeah. Other than that, I chat with them and... Eat, they they seem to have uh, found a bit more purpose. Um, they are... Uh, going and helping uh, some of the buildings that were uh, still still in need of reconstruction. Mm -hmm. um, you actually, after about a few hours of talking with them, kind of getting back, uh, the thing you notice is that Catherine has been organizing them. Uh, and they are now looking to her for their day-to-day -day activities. Hmm. Gonna have to keep an eye on that. Okay. The next day, you stop by again to see Bazo. Um, someone's been asking about you. Oh? Not just you. Seems as though someone paid attention. I don't know if you knew anybody was watching, but somebody seems to have paid attention to the work you've been doing. I assume so. Hmm. They want to meet you. All right. And I said, for the appropriate amount, that could potentially be the case. I don't get a negative read from them, although it's always good to be careful in our cases, of course. Certainly. But uh, I didn't think it would be a problem, but I wanted to check with you first. It's fine. Hmm. I assume they want to meet me and my group. Indeed. Okay. Um... I'll make the arrangements. I'll Thank be you. in touch. All right. And he pays you for the uh, ring. Cool. So it's the amount agreed upon on the list? It's it's not Is an it amount. Is it not on the list? It's, okay. It, it's various and sundry things at the bottom of the list. So ah, okay. Okay. GM's fiat there. Um, it is a hefty bag of coin. We will figure out exactly yeah, later. Good. Remind me to Clark figure that is, out exactly later. Clark will distribute it to the party loot. So okay. he's, not, he's not keeping it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, he'll keep he'll keep what? a share, but I guess that's what the, what would happen anyway. Okay, sure. it's a it's a considerable amount of, of coin. Uh, in fact, you just kind of glancing into it and then hefting it a little bit. There's some platinum in there. Good. What ring was it? Uh, the ring. The ring of evasion. The, yeah, oh, the fragile that, ring of evasion. Because that was yours, so yeah, you keep it. No, he's gonna he's gonna give you guys money for it. It was part of party loot. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be well, so he, he said he was going to sell it. It'll become party loot again. Right? Yeah. Well, because we actually had him using it as well. Yeah, fair. But, um, but yeah, sure. no, he, he said he was going to sell it. Like he had to sell it for it. Or, or he buy said he was going to do it, yeah. and he did it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So that's Clark. Go figure. In a nutshell. <laughs> he does the things. So, 
Are you going to ask anyone of your party to be there to help support you for your presentation in council? Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, I let them know that I'm going to do that. If they want to come by, then certainly they can, but they don't have to if they don't want to. Okay. Um, and I know that she's got a meeting just before me, so she's going to be there anyway. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm making sure I'm there early enough to see her meeting. Because when I cast the charisma boosting one, it's a high enough level that I hit her and Ferendra as well. <laughs> oh, sure. I was just going to do that anyway, because I have an item for it. <laughs> yeah. I, I I have a level four spell slot free, and that'll hit three people, so it's like, okay. Fair. All right. Um, make an investigation roll. Sure. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. You have a tendency to try to keep your ears open for things that are changing in town. Sure. Um, you've heard uh, a rumor, a very vague rumor, but that there is a foreign delicacy, foreign delicacy, foreign delegation, <laughs> there may be delicacy to other things, uh, that has arrived in town, and there, okay. is, some, uh, there is some surprise. Uh, it seems like a military uh, group has come to town. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. At the council, there are numerous things on the docket for the day. They tell you to be there at a specific time, but you realize that's not when you're specifically going to start for the day. Um, you're about eighth back for your appeal. Yours is tenth, so you're going to be a little bit there a little bit later. Uh, but you also know you can't just leave, as you see that some other done in ten minutes. Mm. Um, I thought hers was supposed to be earlier than mine. Mm, yes. Okay. Yeah. Like it said just before mine. So. Right, right. So 8th okay. and 10th. Sorry, I had that backwards. Okay. Uh, but you, as, as I said, you you don't know how quickly it's going to go or how, how fast. One of them was in there for over an hour and a half uh, and came out looking very satisfied. A businessman came, came out. Uh, another one uh, was in there for 15 minutes. And for whatever reason, uh, it came out with just red faced and punches the wall before you. So these are private meetings. Uh, well, they they go into the council chambers. You can go into the council and watch okay, if you yeah. want. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the council chambers. I haven't really described them that much in depth, but basically, there's a central area which is the presentation area. Up high on one side are the actual councilors who sit there uh, with their aides. On the other side is essentially the gallery. That's where the public comes to sit. More often than not, it's probably businessmen and people with uh, with interests. Um, having been to council before, you've also seen that occasionally uh, some of the submeisters have been there, uh, or uh, you've also seen the reeve there from time to time. This particular day, it doesn't seem to be anybody really familiar. Although, uh, both of you make a call it an investigation role. Are either of you two going? I got the invite, sure. Okay. There you I, go. What, what day is this on? The, the next day. Day two, 18. day three. Something like okay. Yeah, I'll go. Okay. So I can get there and realize, oh, this is why I stayed out of politics. So perception yeah. or uh, investigation checks on the other three then, after sure. there? Investigation? Yeah. 20. 20? 15. 15. Na Non-natural 20. Okay. Um... It actually is surprising in a way that Clark is the last to notice, but um, it's not a bad disguise, but everybody's seen him a number of times, to recognize Bozo actually sitting in the crowd, but not sitting as Bozo. Right. He looks much more like a peasant, much more like a farmer who just come in to observe things. Right. Um, so this is the 18th, right? Uh, yes. I guess so. You're the one that's really keeping the calendar far more closely than I am at this point. But that's Two okay. Two days later. Okay. That's okay. Cool. I'm sorry. I'm specific. <laughs> I have reason to be okay. Well, so the proceedings were this morning. Sitting there with a bag of popcorn, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does he notice that we notice him? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't think I've actually oh, yeah. Bozo, okay. so. yeah. He'd recognize one of them um, for sure. But I don't know if he knows the others. Uh, well, he he catches eyes sure. with with you. Yeah. Uh, kind of just there's a little bit of acknowledgement there. Right. It, it's not exactly a disguise as such. It's just that he's not dressed in any of the finery he yeah. normally wears. 
that he's dressing down for the occasion, which is which is actually looking around the crowd more of the opposite of what most people are actually doing. Mm. Uh, most people, you see a farmer who's got the one good jacket that he probably ever owns, yeah. making a petition for uh, for some of the mercenaries to be hired to work on his farm during the summer. Mm. Uh, the city rejects that. It says if you want to hire them, hire them yourself. They're not under contract with us any longer. Um, there's another one that calls for increased patrols of the road between here and uh, 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 Stone... Uh, Waterstone. Waterstone. <laughs> uh, I was thinking Stone River, which is the same thing. But more increased patrols of it there because there have been sightings of, uh, as the person puts it, weird-ass things. <laughs> when tried to elaborate, uh, they kind of say, well, you know, the things that have been going along the roads. Um, <laughs> And they, they basically, uh, we are going to send a note to the Reeve to send an investigator to try to look into that rather than actually increasing the patrols. Various business like that for the day. Someone's looking for a new, uh, a new uh, 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 expansion of their business. They needed to knock down a building that was next to them. The building is vacant. They need the city's permission to do so. Things like that. It's not a ruins building, is it? <laughs> uh, doesn't seem to be. Um, but there were a number of buildings that were partially destroyed or evacuated during the Wild Hunt invasion. Uh, and a number of those ones are actually vacant now. The people did not come back for them. There's also, was curiously, a carpenter store, a carpenter supply store down downtown, which was has been vacant for months, and no one knows why. Almost a year. Yeah. Is it Champion Goods? Yeah, it's, it happens to be called Champion Goods. <laughs> Good, good on you for remembering the name. Ah, that's great. I think we were talking about it last oh, okay. session. <laughs> well, sure. But I remembered it last session, which is still something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comes to number seven on the docket. And then there's a call for, uh, is there a Zuba Maynard here? There's no response. Uh, Alistair looks down at his sheet again. Zuba Maynard? Is there a Zuba Maynard? Does that ring a bell with anybody? Uh, or that name? It doesn't seem like a name you're familiar with. The main door, so there's two uh, double doors where the main entrance is there. Uh, you can also see there's a door up behind where the councillors sit. That's probably their actual private chambers. There's a small door on the other side, which is essentially where the public is usually brought in. Uh, the main double doors burst open. And walking through the door is a halfling dressed in uh, elaborate, expensive looking clothing. We're talking layers of, of clothing which glitter and sparkle, literally leaving glitters and sparkles behind as they walk in, uh, carrying a, a massive cane, wearing a, a velvet, uh, dark red velvet uh, cape, a large hat. I am Zuba Maynard. Thank you for calling my name and thank you for seeing me, Council of the City of. Looks back. Pulls out a notepad. Vatodren! This beautiful city I've always wanted to visit. And the, the Alistair just kind of puts his head in his hands. Yes. They, they, they walk towards the center of the room. Grab their hat. Fling it majestically. Not looking. And you see the hat as it kind of makes this weird lazy spiral. And lands upon uh, someone in the front uh, who's holding their cane up. And it just sort of lands there. And they kind of look... Like, what the hell did this happen? Yeah, free hat. <laughs> um, I humbly come before you. And you can kind of see the expression on the counselor's face. Humble is not a word they would ever use for what this person is doing. <laughs> I humbly come before you as an emissary from the most glorious of all kingdoms. A kingdom just to your north, where the best of all things can be found. It is the kingdom... <laughs> I saw that coming. <laughs> and there's a there's a, a, a snickering that goes through the crowd, and uh, Alistair is just simply shaking his head. Uh, you see, uh, Toria and Rosenquist, the other elven uh, member of the council, uh, just looking aghast as if anybody could suggest such a thing. Uh, the dwarves, uh, Doran is asleep, probably been asleep for the last three or four sessions. Uh, somehow still able to vote when necessary. Uh, and Nora Wondersteel is just sort of uh, uh, banging literally on the gavel that she has, which is made out of stone to call attention and draw order back to the council. 
Uh, let the man speak. Let him speak. I have come to your fair city of Vatudren to offer, well, I want to give you a chance, a limited opportunity for you of this delightful little burg to join with the kingdom of Awesome. If you are simply willing to swear fealty to the king, then you will be brought under our wonderful umbrella and will be able to take in all of the glory that it allows. With the coming warfare far to the north of us for now, but the reverberations being felt, felt as they come down the string of islands, soon it will be at your doorstep. And if you are not prepared for what may be coming, well, then King Awesome cannot be responsible for your falling. So I offer you this limited opportunity. Swear fealty? Provide us with some of your wonderful goods in exchange, and we will embrace you with everything that we are. The snickering in the audience continues. But from the council side of things, there's a lot of silence. May I make an investigation roll? Or, uh, uh, insight roll. Okay, what are you trying to determine? I just want to determine what the fuck is braining. <laughs> Basically, okay. I want to get a read on the guy. Just generally, okay. what's mm. motivations? All right. Like, all right. is this all that's going on? Uh, it's a 17. Okay. Not only does Zuma Zuba th seem um, genuine, but exuberant, and weirdly having a force of will that you kind of have to shake yourself for a moment to not be brought in to go, you know what? Oh, that is a really awesome kingdom. Wait a minute. No, this is ridiculous. But they make a point. No, this can't be the point that's going on. Uh, and you can see even with the snickering beside you, uh, people are also kind of like, who is this guy? I don't know. I want to know more. I'm casting Detect Magic. <laughs> sure. Are you being obvious about it? I'm making uh, the, trying to be quiet about face. it. But, uh, okay. Make a, a sleight of hand roll to try to make it concealed. Somewhere. <gasps> Three. Three? You, 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 despite Detect yourself, you, you're kind of vocalizing the words a lot Oof. and like, doing this and kind of wanted to see the thing and and there, there's people on the bench that kind of edge away from you at yeah, this point I'm going I'm trying to hide it as a stretch but it's just not working <laughs> it's the blue eyes that's the problem that yeah. also kind of makes people a little bit nervous and kind of seeing you do that you do see the some tension actually from the council members because casting magic in the council chamber is probably not a great idea um, but Zuba glows under numerous forms of magic. The hat glows uh, with uh, enchantment magic. Mm. Uh, there's transmutation magic. There's illusion magic. Uh, and there's also divination magic uh, coming off from different parts of uh, Zuba's clothing. Mm. Uh, there is a pause as the council's Sort of turns to each other. There's a loud snore as Doran wakes up. What? What did I miss? Uh, I. Um. May I talk to uh, Alistair? Yeah. Uh, uh, councilman, uh, may I talk to the council for a moment as a uh, friend of the city? Um, Zuba kind of spins in place. It's kind of quite elegant, spinning on one foot. And who do we have here? Ah, are you a friend of my cause? I am, uh, my name is Emeryn Elisar. I am the uh, first priest of the returned Church of Pluxia. Well, my condolences to you, but this is my time. And turns back to the, uh, the, the I pay council attention members. to the council, because they're the ones that get to the, it. The, the, the council's kind of, well, Doran's kind of looking at like, what the hell is this person down here? Why did they look up for this? Uh, uh, Nora's again banging on the gavel to try to bring some attention. Um, you see uh, Alistair uh, still has his head and head and hands. Look, he's nursing a really bad headache all of a sudden. Uh, but uh, uh, you see uh, Alexia uh, turn to Nora. Um, 
If you don't mind, uh, Madame Wondersteel, I will cede some of my time to Amrun, and highly irregular, but if you must, go forth, stand forth, Mr. Alasair, and um, speak your piece. No. I was hoping for a whisper, but uh, if this is how procedure works, then yes. Uh, I you did not want to address the council and chamber? Uh, I just wish to uh, make a quick chat. But I can pronounce it from here uh, if you wish. The uh, uh, Zuba uh, kind of turns on uh, to the council. I object to this outsider trying to mess in my business. Surely it is not up to the council to let a mere member of the community speak for them. That would be highly irregular. And Nora Wondersteel again banging on the gavel. It would be kind of high or highly irregular to let this happen. But I'm not speaking for the council. I'm speaking to the council. Uh, then I deserve to hear whatever whatever complaints you're going to manufacture. Oh. Uh, I just thought that the council might want to know that you're using divination magic, so it's possible that you have an edge over them in negotiations. Uh, also, enchantment and transmutation and illusion, so it's entirely possible that you're attempting to influence their minds. Um, and there's a, a smile that comes across Zuba's eyes and a flick of the that fingers. That makes a lot of sense, based on what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, there's a flicker that, that passes of fingers across the side. Does he cast uh, magic? Because I still have detect magic. It is a magic spell that's being cast. Uh, it is a divination spell. Actually, it's really the enhancement of the divination spell before. Uh, you see it suddenly flare in, and the as the necklace, which was divination before, kind of glows with active use. It was passive mm. before, now it's active. Ah, I see. A fellow user of the magical art. Well... Uh, you, of course, would know all about influencing others with your magic. I have heard great tales of Amrun Elisar's ability to sway entire groups of people with his magical words. So, of course, you know better than I oh, really? how to sway the council with your words. Hmm? I have no need to sway the council. I merely report information. Also, the council may wish to... Like up north, there was, a, there was a jail cell with bars that prevented magic from being cast. You guys might want to put that in this area. I protest. Magic is a part of my very being, and to remove it from me would utterly kill me. We are in the kingdom of awesome, infused with such magic from birth, and we know no other way. If you wish to deny me life, then you could take away such magical things. I'm sure my... Uh, esteemed colleague here would also note his own magics, some of which he's using right now. In fact, he himself has used enchantment and divin divination. Actually, I don't think I've used the enchantment yet because our things haven't come up, but... Uh, they don't seem to notice that. Yeah. Um, let's see... Are we sitting next to each other? Um, I say, well... Not for much longer. I leave it up to the council. Clark starts to get uh, I've said my piece. This is your decision to make. I'll return to my seat. The hubbub among the audience is growing. For those of you sitting in the audience, there's kind of equal mixes of, it's a great day to come to the council meeting. This is exciting. What the hell's going on? <laughs> well, I was going, oh, I need a second bag of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, going to sneak out and pull a uh, friend out with me just to give okay. her a pe pep talk in the hallway. Okay. The, she, the, the thing she's like, kind of looking to try to see what's going on as if, you know, this is kind of what... Is it always like this? No. Oh, damn. Um, meanwhile, in the center, Zuba ra stra straightens their hands, squeezes their hands again. Well, this is a limited time offer, and we come to you in the greatest bonds of friendship that could be forged. It is up to you to decide. As the passerby had noted, it is up to the council, of course, to decide whether you wish to join with the forces of Awesome, or wish to hide and perhaps fall alone. Nora, again, banging on the gavel as the crowd is kind of really just kind of getting louder and louder. Looks over at the others. 
Alistair has not stopped, just <laughs> rubbing his forehead. Do any of the council members seem to have ma- active magic on them? Oh, yeah. Like Every the- single one of them has at least three magical effects uh, occurring right now. Okay, is there anything that looks like they've been enchanted, or they, or is it just that they are actually... You don't know the source items? of the magic. You only know the magic is there. Uh, enchantment, divination, uh, uh, illusion, uh, even transmutation is present. In, in, in like mo- all of them in one degree or another. Uh, most of it okay. is items that but, they are wearing. There yeah. are spells that are cast on them. Alexia has illusion magic on her. Yeah. Uh, Nora Wondersteel has uh, divination magic on her. Um, so there are definitely magical effects, strong magical effects. But it doesn't themselves. look like the council has been enchanted. There's no single magical yeah. effect which is kind of insisting across them now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No, I let them in. So Nora, this is up to them. This Nora, is their government. Nora looks to the to the others. Um, I don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> uh, Doran's like, shut the hell up and let me go back to sleep. Um, Mood. <laughs> Rosenquist. No. Ro- Rosenquist is is sort of hiding his hand, uh, hiding his face behind his hands, but it's pretty clear that he's trying not to laugh his ass off. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Alistair finally <laughs> moves, his uh, moves his hand. Madam Wondersteel, if um, if I may, and you see that as he looks over to the other council members, Alexia nods, uh, Nora nods, Doran is already kind of sitting back, oh, I just wanted to sleep, um, and Rosenkeet is is just kind of nodding a little bit. We are not unfamiliar with your kingdom. (laughs) But it is not the practice of this city or council to swear fealty to any nation. We are sovereign. We are the protectorate of all the tour. And while your offer is generous, I'm afraid we must decline. And Zuba uh, sort of puts his hand or puts her hand across their, their chest. Well, let it not be said that the kingdom of Awesome is not fair and did not give you an opportunity to demonstrate your wisdom and to allow you into the embrace of our kingdom. This will not be the last time that you hear from the Kingdom of Awesome. We will send further emissaries until you have clearly understood the weight of the decision that faces before you. Perhaps the sitting council members as they are right now will no longer be seated in these positions and other calmer, cooler, smarter, brighter, more longevity looking people will be in their place. Until that happens, I leave you. And raising their hands open wide, the hat flies off of the uh, cane that someone is holding and they kind of react to it and goes into their hand. With a flourish, they put the hat back on, turn, and leave. As they're walking out, I just say, I love your style. And just a turn and a a (laughs) wink. In the hallway, I'm just like, we got this. (laughs) And with a and with a, uh, a flourish as they're leaving the door, there's a snap of their fingers, and the double doors <laughs> clash, uh, slam close behind them. I, I just said. <laughs> in, in the hallway, while that last part is happening, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so everybody's exasperated and just wants plain information now. We got this, and I'm going to using my bracer cast um, two charges of um, enhance abilities. One on myself, one on her, <laughs> uh, for charisma. <laughs> okay. So that gives us advantage on any charisma-based rolls. Okay, how long does that last? An hour. Perfect. All right. Uh, so, uh, pep talk, we got this. We've, Alexa has been doing her part. She said she's already been doing her part. We know what's going on. Okay. You walk down the hallway, or you watch uh, Zuba walking down the hallway, 
Um, the hallway kind of has windows on, on either side. It's a kind of external hallway. Uh, you can see Zuba walking gracefully, uh, not even seemingly put out or bothered by the response. Maybe they expected the response, who knows. Um, and you see them walking outward. Um, and the doors at the end of the hallway are thrown wide. Mm -hmm. And you hear, because of the skill of perception that you have, well, I tried. They didn't listen, listen to reasoned arguments. I suppose at the behest of the King of Awesome, it's now your turn, Sir Anik. Uh, sorry, I think I might have gotten the name wrong. Ah, to check my notes. Do, 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 do. Sir Zera, actually. And the halfling leaves through the doors. And you see stepping into the door and filling the door an eight-foot knight dressed in dark green armor with six soldiers standing behind them. And they begin marching down the hallway to the council chambers. And I think that's where we're going to pause for tonight. Wasn't sure how quite far we would get. And... Uh, but there we go. That is the introduction of the Kingdom of Awesome. Now, uh, for those of you at home, obviously some of the players were aware of this. I wasn't sure how much you actually knew of this. We, uh, we only knew what Adam said last game, uh, and about the coin and his tat and his other character's tattoo. So, for those of you at home, um, one of our original players, Adam, uh, is very creative. And when he makes up his characters, he gives a very interesting backstory that at some point I always want to in, uh, introduce. And it was Adam's write-up that included the Kingdom of Awesome. It sounds like a joke, and kind of mostly is, but it is also, I will say, pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, and I've been waiting for an opportunity to introduce uh, their, their emissaries. So uh, you've gotten a hint at what might be coming up next. We'll have another uh, session in a week. Uh, do we have... Did he go to the washroom? Yeah. We don't have a Clark, so we'll have to uh, wrap up. Uh, I think he stepped out just as I was getting into the last part of the scene. Darn. But um, uh, how should people look at social media? What well, should they do? Well, they should <laughs> check out the Legends of the Drowned Isles uh, Facebook page. Uh, not to be confused by the Watchers of the... of. I think we changed the name. Just the Watchers, Watchers of Omasha, of, of Omasha uh, mm -hmm. group, which is linked to the page, but not to be confused with the page. Uh, and we have that, we have that, and the pic, pic, uh, the pictures that we showed earlier will be in both of those places. And I have stalled long enough, apparently. <laughs> so we're at the prominent moment of, of wrapping up. You stepped oh. out just at that point. Sorry. But uh, you have one job. <laughs> <laughs> For the wrap-up, uh, Clarks slash Jody, yes. what should people do? Uh, they should uh, like uh, the page on our on our YouTube space, which I believe is in CAF. In CAF YouTube.com slash ENCAF1. Yes, find our playlist, uh, like it, subscribe, and ring the bell for further notifications. There you go. And I hope you had a good time. And uh, Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything's <laughs> coming up awesome. All right, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, us getting back into the swing of things. I, I'm actually kind of can't believe I actually was able to bring in the Kingdom of Awesome. I feel <laughs> that's, a, that's a little personal pat on the back somewhere. Uh, we will progress again uh, with this, uh, this council meeting, I think, next week. Until then, uh, have a great week. See you. I know how.